live from Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. It's the season opener. This evening, the 10th ranked Georgia Bulldogs play host to the defending Division I AA national champion, Georgia Southern Eagles. And hello again, everybody. I'm Matt Stewart, joined by the legendary quarterback of Georgia's 1980 national championship team, Buck Ballou. Amid great expectations, Georgia opens this 2000 season. 19 starters back from last year's 8-4 and four campaign. And many Georgia fans feel this is the year the Bulldogs can play for an SEC championship. Only nine starters return for Georgia Southern, a team that back in December won their fifth national championship. And, Buck, this is a very odd rivalry in that Georgia fans typically pull for Georgia Southern and vice versa. Well, exactly. The Georgia Southern fans grew up, for the most part, pulling for the dogs. Of course, Irk Russell changed all that by going down and starting a tremendous program in Statesboro. Uh, a little different situation now uh, here in a new uh, millennium. Well, Georgia will be without three key starters on the defensive side, Richard Seymour, Kendrell Bell, and uh, also Charles Grant due to a phone card scandal. And Michael Greer is out for the first five games, suspended for disciplinary reasons as well, team violation. So Georgia starts sharp-minded this, this season. Well, Coach Gibbs on the defensive side, hoping for a little bit better start. He will be without three key starters today on defense versus a very dangerous offense. Something to pay attention to. As we mentioned, this is not the same team that won the national championship for Georgia Southern nine months ago. Only three starters back on offense, only one on the offensive line. Same coaching staff, same system, but missing some key personnel. Two on the offensive line, both All-Americans. Two on the defensive line that were outstanding. And two cornerbacks that are now playing in the NFL. Again, something else to keep in mind, the Georgia offense needs to dominate in this game on the field and the Georgia Bulldogs are getting ready to come through the banner and there they come the 2000 Georgia Bulldogs much has been written and said about this team and Bulldog fans a record crowd here tonight greet them He's with much and with great expectations there's a record crowd of 86,520 in here this evening due to the renovations that they've done to Sanford Stadium during the offseason. Well, the fans are fired up. There's no question about that, Matt. And also the teams at the end of warm-ups, both on the middle of the field, jumping up and down. Coaches had to get in there and separate these two teams. Emotions flying high right now. Well, as we mentioned, the uh, scandal from this summer has resulted in the one-game suspensions of Richard Seymour, Charles Grant, and Kendrell Bell. Tony Gilbert is also due to serve a suspension, but he will play this evening, and he'll serve his one-game suspension next week against the University of South Carolina. The Bulldogs will also be missing uh, Kenny Bailey this evening. The uh, backup running back, he also is serving a one-game suspension. Tony Gilbert has his hands full today. Middle linebacker filling in for Kendrell Bell, and he needs to step up and play superior football today because he's facing the best running back, the best fullback in the nation, Matt, and Mr. Peterson. Well, it'll be interesting to see Adrian Peterson. He just may be the best running back in the nation. The Walter Payton Award winner as the top player in Division I AA last season as just a sophomore. He has, in his collegiate career, rushed for over 100 yards in 30 consecutive games and has a good chance of breaking Archie Griffin's all-time record of uh, consecutive games over 100 yards rushing. He needs 138 yards today to break the Georgia Southern career rushing record held by Joe Ross of 3,876 yards. Oh, and needs one TD to set a Georgia Southern career touchdown record. Adrian Peterson will have his name all over the record book at the end of his career. And there you take a look at what Adrian Peterson has done for Georgia Southern. 30 straight 100-yard rushing games, 11 of excess 200 yards, and 101 rushing records. He broke 73 records alone during the 1999 season in which Georgia Southern went 13-2 and, and routed Youngstown State in the national championship game. Uh, the best thing you can say about Adrian Peterson, the Eagles record with uh, Adrian in the lineup, 27-3. We're talking about a program that has won more games than any program the last two years at any level. 
27 wins by Georgia Southern the last two years. Well, Paul Johnson begins his fourth season at the helm for Georgia Southern with a record of 37 and six. He has been the national coach of the year all three years that he has been in Statesboro. Well, he learned under Irk Russell, the great Irk Russell down at Georgia Southern, spent four years with Irk on his staff and went on to great things, eight years at Hawaii. Uh, the Rainbows broke a lot of records uh, when he was there at Navy two years, did some fantastic things there. You can bet one thing, Paul Johnson's offense will run the football and they do it like nobody else. Rob Baronis will kick off for Georgia Southern if the name sounds familiar. He was a Lou Groza semifinalist at Auburn two years ago, but when Tommy Tuberville came in there, did not fit into the Tigers' plans. He has transferred to Georgia Southern. He will handle the place-kicking chores for Georgia Southern this season. Standing deep for the Georgia Bulldogs is two running backs, Bruce Thornton and the true freshman, Musa Smith. Smith lined up on the outside, and Bruce Thornton down low as you looked at him on the screen. A lot of big name freshmen uh, these Georgia fans want to get a look at, Musa Smith being one of those. And the 2000 season is underway. Oh, he's bringing it out. Musa Smith from deep in the end zone brings it up to the 16 yard line and that's where the Georgia Bulldogs will start their season. So Musa Smith is an aggressive player. Well, he had obviously some second thoughts. Down yes, he yes. did. He had some second thoughts, but he had already crossed the line. He took that ball deep, and as we take a look at the starting lineup for the Georgia Bulldogs, of course, Quincy Carter, the Heisman Trophy candidate, a quarterback. Sangson Milliken in the backfield. Darrell Robinson is the flanker. Terrell, uh, Terrence Edwards, the split in, and Javaris Johnson, the tight end. He's had some injury problems during the offseason. McGill, Jennings, Pate, Breedlove, and Stinchcomb up front. McGill and Pate are the newcomers on that line as far as starters are concerned. Great depth on that offensive line. I'm sure we'll see uh, some of those other guys very soon. Edwards in motion. Quincy throws to him. Oh. Mm. Has some blockers out there. Spins up past the 20-yard uh, past the line up to the 21. Could have been a big play there. Uh, he was close to breaking that, Matt. He'll receive the replay. Quincy, great first play. Easy pass to complete and an opportunity to come up with a big play. You put it in your big play player's hand, and he was within one guy of breaking that the distance. Had Breedlove and Stinchcomb up there blocking for him to Tara, Pescada, and LeBlanc up front for Georgia Southern. Middlebrook's niece, Ward and Jones, are the linebackers. Second down. And off goes the Milliken, the senior. He's close to a first down. I believe he has it. You know, all the talk about the running backs here coming into the season, about the two freshmen, Sanks, and who ends up winding up starting at running back, Brett Milliken, one of the team captains on offense. Brett Milliken has been in the program now for five years, including his redshirt season as we round out the Georgia Southern starting lineup, Rainey, Kearns, Hayden, and Gates, a uh, transfer from LSU in the secondary for the Eagles. You know, I think Georgia can come in and pound the football all four quarters if they want. I don't think they want to do that. They want to spread it around and throw it around a little bit. From the 27. Carter has time. Throws in the middle. Broken up. They were looking for McMichael we in the middle yeah, and little. broke it up. Play action pass. Quincy looking for an open Second receiver. Pass. He gets one to Terrence, but... Just throws it too high. You throw the ball across the middle, man. You've got to keep it down. And uh, Quincy, poor throw that time. He needs to keep the ball down. Make it an easy catch for these receivers. Across the middle, you don't want to leave them open like that. Second down and 10. LeBron Mitchell splits out. Bottom of your screen. Three receivers for the Bulldogs. Quincy going to take it himself. Brought down at the 29-yard line by LeBlanc after a two-yard gain. Brings up third and eight. Here we go. Looks like a called play, almost a quarterback draw. Excellent play call with Quincy and his ability to run around and make people miss. LeBlanc comes up with a big tackle there. Arm tackle on Quincy. Maybe all this weight loss. Uh, Quincy has lost, uh, prevents him from running through those arm tackles now. That was a nice uh, open field tackle by LeBlanc. Who's battling a sore foot? Uh, the, the Eagle staff 
really not sure how often he'll be able to play in there today, but he gets the start. Third down and eight, ball at the 29. Quincy with time, fires, he has McMichael who has a first down as he's driven out of bounds at the 43 yard line by Deion Stokes. Here we go, Quincy back, and obviously third down play, key for Georgia on offense, get the ball to their tight ends. Two of the best in the nation, McMichael, gonna have a fabulous career here at Georgia. Donnan likes to use those tight ends, and why not? Big targets, tough to tackle. Randy McMichael is gonna be a star in this offense. Freshman All-American a year ago. Ball First just uh, across the 41 yard line. First third down, Matt, and they convert. He wants to throw again. Fires in the middle. It looked like the ball was tipped, perhaps, at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it looked like Georgia running a pick play that time, and uh, LeBron uh, Mitchell and uh, Terrence Edwards end up picking each other. It'll be second down. Opening game, everybody has jitters, even the quarterback uh, like Quincy Carter, who's played uh, two full years here at Georgia. but. Season opener, you've worked so hard during the offseason, the anticipation, the anxiety involved. Everybody's a little nervous right now. Well, after two years, only four quarterbacks have ever passed for more yards than Quincy has passed for at the University of Georgia. Forever. Detmer, Charlie Ward, Kevin Sweeney, and Randall Cunningham. I'm sure you've heard of all of them. But he's taken some heat. Quincy tosses to Sainz his first carry. Sainz cuts back across the 50-yard line, close to a first down. At the 48, 47 and a half. Michael Ward, the linebacker, got him. Here's Georgia mixing it up on offense. Don, and uh, for the most part, a master in the balanced offense. Throw it, run it, keep the defense from knowing what you're doing. And Sanks is uh, in for a big season, I feel, Matt. He's come in, really dedicated himself during the offseason in the best shape of his life, he tells me. He is ready to prove these uh, critics wrong. He's, he's capable of doing that. He's about 10 pounds lighter than he was this time a year ago. Rushed for 900 yards last year. Averaged five yards per carry, but the criticism comes from two critical fumbles, one that wasn't, but counted nonetheless. First and 10. Edwards got the handoff going around the far side. Looks like Champ Bailey, doesn't it? We saw that play a lot with Champ. Yeah. You know, that's the great thing about Jim Donovan. He gets the ball in his big players' hands and, and does it in a number of different ways. Here we go on the reverse, little inside twin reverse, and Terrence Edwards, probably one of the fastest guys on the field. Give him the ball, let him make something happen. Now you're looking at second and three. Second down and a long three from just inside the 42-yard line. Bulldogs started this drive at the 16. And they've moved it. 41 yards, second down and a long three. And Sainz, who has the first down, fights forward to the 35 and a half. Again, Michael Ward, the linebacker, was the first one to hit him. Made a great read there. The play's uh, going strong side, and you see him make the cut back. That's where the hole is. Jonas Jennings, an excellent job. Brady Pate getting it done. Great read by Sanks. He sees the opening and hits it hard. First and 10, Georgia, ball at the 35 and a half yard line. Matt Stewart and Buck Ballou with you on an overcast evening at Sanford Stadium. Very humid evening. You see Jasper's numbers from a year ago. Ryder wants to throw, dumps it off to Javaris Johnson, who is upended over on the far side by David Young, the sophomore strong safety. A lot of questions uh, surrounding Javaris Johnson and his health. Tough to play football, tough to play tight end with fractured or cracked ribs. And uh, as you see, that rib cage is uh, pulled in there pretty tight. And they're concerned about uh, you know, his uh, conditioning and, and how he will be able to hold up over four quarters. But they have some depth at tight end. If you got somebody hurt, that's the position to, uh, I guess, deal with it. Well, Jason Raider is expected to see some playing time this year, a sophomore. And West Virginia played at the same high school as the uh, Talented quarterback J.R. House, who decided to play baseball instead. Handoff goes to Sanks. He has a first down as he tried to spin out of a tackle and falls forward across the 25 yard line. Ryan Haddon wrapped him up, but not before Jasper picked up the first down. 
So looking at this Georgia Southern defense, we mentioned the two uh, defensive linemen that are gone and the two cornerbacks uh, that are on to the NFL. Their two safeties are very uh, experienced players, Haddon and uh, Kearns, but not pass coverage type people, Matt. They are very great during run support. You saw Haddon come up and make the tackle there. Great versus the run, questionable uh, versus the pass because of speed reasons. First and 10, ball at the 24. Milliken back in the ball game for the Bulldogs. And off goes to Saints again. Goes right up the middle. Slips through a couple of tackles down to about the 17-yard line. Sanks is thinking, hey, Adrian Peterson, you know, I can tote this rock a little bit too. Watch him just run over the linebacker, Jason Neese. Neese weighs 220 pounds. I mean, he's, he's a load himself. Sanks in great shape, man. I mean, he's looking great. Ball good, good cuts and, and holding on to the ball so far. Ball spotted at the 18-yard line, second down and four. Sanks gets it again. Sanks down to about the 15-yard line, 14-yard line. Short of the first down, but close to it. It'll be third down and very short for the Bulldogs. I think it's pretty evident here on the first series that Georgia can run against this Georgia Southern defense whenever they want. Uh, outweighing most of those guys on the Georgia Southern defensive line by, I don't know, 15, 20 to, in some cases, 50 pounds per man. It averages out to a 37-pound advantage for Georgia. Georgia's offensive line to Georgia Southern's defensive line. Of course, Georgia Southern plays a three-man front and brings the linebackers up. Quincy on the keeper. Looks like he picked up the first down. We'll see where they spot it. It is a first down. Ball at the 13, first and 10 for the Bulldogs. This drive is now consumed. Five minutes and 20 seconds. Very impressive. Georgia came out tossing it around a little bit, but uh, once they've got on Georgia's southern side of the football field, baby, they're pounding the ball, running it. And off to Milliken. Milliken. Tried to squirm out of a tackle, but couldn't. McCullough made the stop for Georgia Southern. Jimmy McCullough, who has battled back from a season-ending knee injury in last year's season opener. So he missed all of last season, so the young man stuck with it, and he's starting here today. One of the playing more, here yeah, today. one of the more talented players on the Eagle roster. Rusty Russell was high on this guy last year, and it was just a crying shame that uh, he had to go down with an injury uh, during that Eagles national championship run. Second down and nine, ball from the 12. Georgia lines up three receivers. Up top, Carter. The time wraps it up there. Oh, just short for McMichael, who was sliding towards the pylon in the near corner, and it's third down. A lot of people at home probably thinking, terrible pass by Quincy Carter, but he did give him a chance to make the catch. Defensive back, not a prayer of making the catch. Sort of a wounded duck. Uh, not one of Quincy's best throws, but uh, McMichael had a chance to bring it down with a great catch. Third down and nine from the 12. This is a big play, Matt. You know, you don't want to leave here with three points after this kind of drive. You want to get seven in this instance. I'm kind of surprised the lights, stadium lights are on. Carter, again with plenty of time, fires to an open. Darrell Robinson and Georgia takes a 6-0 lead. Darrell Robinson just suddenly came wide open in the middle of the field, and Quincy put it on the money. He really showed great patience here. You see him in the pocket, plenty of time to throw. Stinchcomb, that offensive line, doing a great job, and it gave Darrell a chance to get open. Initially, he is covered. But by uh, great patience by Quincy, he stays in the pocket, delivers the ball, beautiful throw for the touchdown. Brett Kerouac on for the extra point attempt. He puts it through, and with 8.31 to play in the first quarter, the Georgia Bulldogs have taken a 7-0 lead on Georgia Southern. So Darrell Robinson, in his first game, remember, he did not play last year. He was on the team, but as a partial qualifier, could not play. And here in his first game, he 
scores a touchdown. He's one of these players that all these fans have heard of so much about. And uh, I'm sure it's a pleasure. It is for me not having a chance to see Darrell, hearing about Darrell. Uh, thus far in the first quarter, Darrell Robinson looks like a player. Must be fun for him getting in the end zone, start a new season. Well, the Georgia Bulldogs just took the opening kickoff and then drove 84 yards, and it covered six minutes and 29 seconds. We didn't see much evidence of opening day jitters, but of course Jim Donnan was a little bit concerned about that earlier in the week. Yeah, and I, you know, the game, game plan. All the concerns that any coach would have, regardless of who you're playing, uh, you know, new uh, kicking teams, special teams, uh, you worry about all the things that can happen uh, from a jitter standpoint, from uh, being nervous. and uh, But, you know, we do have some experienced players, and uh, we feel like that uh, we've had a good fall camp. Looking forward to uh, seeing how we're going to mesh as a unit. Well, he's got to be pleased thus far. I, I was going to mention that Jim Downey, like every head coach, it, they do a great job of worrying anyway. You know, I think the, the problem he was uh, concerned with was putting the football on the ground, turnovers. Anthony Williams at the 12-yard line. Nine-yard return up to the 21, and that's where Georgia Southern begins their first possession of the 2000 season and our first chance to see Adrian Peterson. There is a bulldog down on the looks field. Like Barrera. Looks like Terrell Barrera. Looks like he is shaken up, and that's always a horrible thing to see. And he, you know, it's, it's never a good thing to see an injury at any point of the season, but you really feel bad for these kids when something goes awry in the season opener. And especially a kid that, uh, you know, is starting for the first time in his career in college. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's a shoulder or something. Well, they're looking at him. Well, the trainers are attending to Terrell Biera right now. Looks like Kentrell Curry uh, will have to step up and and get it done. Another freshman backing up uh, Vieira. He's going to play a lot of football today. The lights are now starting to come on here at Sanford Stadium. Well, in Jim Donnan's first four seasons here at the University of Georgia, 23 oh, freshmen. I played, oh, it is Boss Bailey. I thought it was Terrell Biera. All we could see was the five. Yeah, that's 45, Boss Bailey. I thought it was 15, Terrell Biera, and it looks like Boss is really shaken up. Let's see, we'll have to check it. He is able to walk off the field, but. And that means uh, another freshman, Chris Clemens. Yeah. Griffin, Georgia. And they just checked in. And we were mentioning that in Jim Donnan's first uh, four seasons, he has started or rather 23 freshmen have played, and now you see Boss Bailey walking under his own power and waving to the crowd and motioning for them to get up and cheer without the help of the trainer. So that looks like good news that Boss Bailey was able to make it to the sidelines under his own power. So here we go. First and 10 for Georgia Southern, ball at the 21. Handoff goes to Adrian Peterson, who gets about four yards up to the 25 on his first carry of his junior season. And the Gary Gibbs era is underway. Taking a look at the Eagles lineup, Revere, Peterson, Myers, and Weathers in the backfield. Johnson and Owens are the wideouts. With Scott, McCoy, Everett, Clark, and Anderson up front, Michael Anderson the only returning starter on that offensive line. Second down and six from the 25. Adrian Peterson gets it again, and he just got five yards up to the 30-yard line. Ball popped up afterwards, but it was well after the play was down. I think you uh, will be saying that a little bit today. Revere to Peterson, right up the gut. But you'll see a lot more from Adrian Peterson than just running up the middle. This offense will give him chances to make big plays all over the field. There's Georgia's starting defense. Evan Stroud and Jacobs with a dream up front. Jacobs and a dream getting the starts because of these suspensions. Bailey, Bell, and Witherspoon, although Kendrell Bell is not dressed today, and Tony Gilbert starting in his place. Oh, that's close. On third down, we'll have to check this, see where they spot it. Looks like he got it, though, from the spot. Looks like it'd be a first down, Eagles. Flex bone attack. 
Ball at the 32, two yards there. We'll take another look at it. Revere on the keeper. Followed his left guard and picked up the first down. So first and 10 for Georgia Southern. Ball at the 32. Clouds look kind of heavy over the rim of the stadium. We'll, we'll hope that the rain stays away. Air's a little heavy, too. And it's humid. Weather started in motion. Now Revere on the keeper. Tosses to Peterson. Here we go. Off one tackle. Up to the 40. Up to the 45. Up to the 50-yard line. And he looks as good as advertised. Absolutely. I don't know why anybody would question this guy after the numbers he's put up for two years. And again, two missed tackles you see here. He gets the pitch. There's Gilbert. He comes up empty. Witherspoon, Witherspoon comes up empty. Two broken tackles. This is something Georgia had to work in the spring of tackling. It was a major issue a year ago. And, brother, they better gang tackle Adrian Peterson today. He's the toughest running back to tackle in the country. Well, Georgia Southern's a Division I AA opponent, but Adrian Peterson might just be the best running back they face all season long. You said it. First and 10, ball at the 49, and now the and officials step it. in. Gary Gibbs uh, located next to us here in the coaching uh, Georgia coaches box, and he it looks cool, calm, and collected, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And I think that's he's that's seen a lot of good running backs coming out yeah. of the, his days in the. Yeah. Uh, He'll be a great the influence on these uh, Georgia defensive players just by being cool and calm. He's seen it all before. He has that confidence. First and ten at the Georgia 48-yard line. Adrian Peterson already putting on quite a show. He gets the handoff this time and gets a couple of yards. This time someone submarined him. I think it might have been David Jacobs. Jacobs did make the play. You know, as far as the line of scrimmage goes, not, not as big a difference weight-wise as far as the Georgia uh, defensive line and the Georgia Southern offensive line. Not as big a mismatch as you see on the other side of the ball. Especially second, with Seymour out. Second down and eight. Ball at the 46. Peterson got it again, and this time the linebacker, Will Wither Witherspoon, stepped up there and filled the hole. Stroud and Clemens also went on that tackle, and that's what you have to do with Adrian Peterson, as you see, gang tackle. One guy just won't bring this guy down. Has to be two or three guys helping each other. Yeah, Jacobs was the one who grabbed yeah. his ankles, and then Witherspoon finished him, up, finished him off up top. Third down and nine. They lost a yard on that play. Well, really more like third and eight from the 46. Let's see if J.R. Revere puts it up. Back to pass, throws over on the far side. It's complete to Weathers, but short of the first down at the 41. So now they're going to have a decision to make. Will they go for it on fourth and two, or will they punt? I bet they'd go for it. And you see Paul Johnson here. He uh, calling J.R. Revere, who made a fine throw here, running to his left. Not an easy throw to make. Right on the money. Uh, Weathers a big play guy. For Georgia Southern keep an eye on him fourth down and two looks like Georgia Southern will go for it so already things get kind of interesting here at Sanford Stadium fourth and two there you see boss Bailey on crutches headed to the locker room in motion and uh, Marcus Stroud jumped offside and then Anthony Scott the center moved and only in the opener do you see stuff like that. There was a whole lot of movement. Uh, Georgia Southern was in motion, but I don't know that their motion was illegal, although they may have had two men in motion at the same time, but no flags were thrown at that time. So let's see what the call is. Dead ball. Offsides against the defense. Five yards. What's that? If we can go back and see the replay, I don't, know, I don't know if this picture is going to show it. I thought they had two men in motion at one time. Well, you're counting Revere with his head motion? No, I thought they I, uh, we couldn't see it. Yeah. So. Well, that's illegal, too. But Georgia was definitely offside, that's for sure. So it's first and 10, ball at the 36. Revere oh, tosses to Peterson. Peterson has some room and down from behind by Will Witherspoon at the 27-yard line. Yeah. After, what, an eight-yard gain? This they is... This offense is so tough to stop. I mean, nobody in the nation has been able to do it. One double A, one A, you name it, they can't stop it. And they, and it's because they can do so much out of it, Matt. Uh, this fullback mainly up the middle. Now you see him on the option out wide with a lead blocker. And uh, 
Makes it extremely tough on the defense. Georgia's never seen anything like this. Second down and one. Georgia Southern has never beaten a Division I opponent, but they sure have given a lot They've of people scared. They scared out of some people. Including Florida State, Florida, Auburn, Auburn you name it. They've got them. East Carolina. Adrian Peterson hit hard by Tony Gilbert as he tried to move at left tackle. Good read by Gilbert there. Georgia Southern running a uh, quick trap, and they got the trap block. And they did get the first down. Yeah, but you see Gilbert uh, makes the read, steps up, and makes the stick. All eyes should be on Gilbert in there today with uh, Kendrell Bell out of the lineup due to the phone scam deal. And uh, Clemens, or Gilbert, that is, uh, needs to have a big day for this Georgia Well, defense. this is exactly what Coach Donovan feared. And now a timeout has been called on the field, I believe. No, no timeout has been called. But anyway, this is what Donovan feared. You sit, you, uh, you sit Kendrell Bell out, and on the first kickoff. Yeah, down goes the linebacker. Boss Bailey goes down. You're already thin at linebacker, and then that hurts. Revere on the keeper. And he's going to go down back at the 34-yard line. Cat Burnett, the free safety, came up to make the play. That's what you like to see is these uh, defensive backs coming up and making tackles. Again, Revere nowhere to go. He's just looking for a place to fall down and get to second down. I'm wondering if that might not have been a busted play if we well, can look at it again because Adrian Peterson, if, if he was his pitch man. a lot of misdirection man, stuff in this offense. Could have been just a quarterback rollout with no been. wide receivers. He said he's an excellent runner, Matt. J.R. Revere. Back at the 35 after a loss of nine, so second down and 19. Pitch on the reverse for Chris Johnson who wants to throw. And now he's going to run with it and go down at the 35-yard line on the tackle by Chris Clemens, the freshman linebacker. Who uh, showed some great speed there. Clemens, a very talented guy. Again, uh, Paul Johnson, one of these guys, then call that a trick play. That's just part of the offense. Reverse pass, Chris Johnson, a former high school quarterback. He's looking for the post pattern, and the post pattern was not there. Guys running deep down the left sideline, nowhere to go with it. That would have been a very difficult throw to throw back across the field for the intended receiver. So third down and 20 now. They actually lost a yard on that play. It's out beyond the 35-yard line. They do have an excellent place kicker. Heavy rush. Pass goes to Peterson. Peterson's driven out of bounds. They lost more yardage. That was Will Witherspoon again. Witherspoon, Gilbert, and Clemens, the linebackers, really coming up big on this first possession for Georgia Southern, and that may have pushed them out of field goal range. Good play. I mean, third and 20, not a lot you can do on offense. Screen pass, probably the best alternative, and you see the red shirts in the area. Uh, Adrian, nowhere to run that time. And they are now out of field goal range. They had a shot to maybe get three, and with that loss of yardage, they'll now punt. Scott Shelton on the punt, standing at his own 47-yard line. Damian Gary stands deep for the Bulldogs at the 10. position they had a chance there with Gates and Stokes standing inside the five to maybe down it but the ball hit that ground and took too high a hop into the end zone and now it looks like it's starting to rain indeed it's coming down a pretty good drizzle right now yeah. at Sanford Stadium everybody looking for the poncho umbrellas not allowed in Sanford Stadium rain never hurt anybody just that lightning that scares the victims out of you don't see any of that yet well I think we're okay because Where's your car parked? Yeah, Lee Corso's <laughs> car is not anywhere around. I understand the fans' perspective at breaking, breaking up tailgate breaking parties up that have been going too. on, family get-togethers that have been going on for 30, 40 years. Change is always tough. We have the uh, word coming in now from the uh, press box that Boss Bailey suffered an injury to his right knee on that kickoff, and his return to the game is doubtful. And the old slap in the face by announcing that last week. Terrence Edwards, who then dropped the ball, but it was after he was down in the first down for Georgia, just shy of the 40-yard line. 
best play in football, at least one of the best plays in football. Fake it up the middle, draw those backers in, get the quarterback on the move. He's looking for the tight end first in the flat, doesn't have it, didn't have the curl. Comes to his third option, which is uh, Terrence Edwards, all the way across from the opposite side of the field on that deep crossing route. Delivers the ball. Excellent play by the dogs. First and 10, ball just shy of the 40-yard line. A buck 40 left in the first quarter. Quincy fires over on the far side looking for McMichael, the tight end, glances off his hands out of bounds. Now, as we earlier said, Quincy is in some quite elite company when it comes to his prolific passing after just two seasons. You see Ty Detmer and Charlie Ward Kevin Sweeney and Randall Cunningham are the only quarterbacks ever to throw for more yards in their first two years than Quincy has thrown for here at the University of Georgia. And, of course, and while the Detmer criticism? and, Detmer and uh, Ward both won Heisman trophies. Of course, all the fans want to know is Quincy's 0-6 versus Tennessee, Florida, and Tech. A little unfair, I think. I think it's extremely unfair. Sanks picks up about five and a half yards. Kearns, the strong safety, came over to make sure he didn't get any further. I think it's extremely unfair, the criticism. I know that Coach Jim Donnan was particularly rankled by yeah. the article that appeared in the AJC last week. Mark talking Slaybaugh. about the university, uh, talking about, uh, you know, Quincy's inability to win the big game. Last time I checked, there was, was more than one player on the field. Yeah, I always uh, grew up thinking it was an 11-on-11 game, a team game. Once he hadn't had the players Tennessee and Florida's had the last two years, Tech may be a different story. And some would argue that, you know, the position you got to expect some of that, though. Playing quarterback is part of it. Quincy back to pass. Fires. Oh, oh nice oh, yeah. catch by McMichael. One handed Woo. and brought it in, still on his feet, down to the 35 yard line. Sweet hands by Randy McMichael. Nice touch pass from Quincy just to dump it out there for him and then. Kind of like a basketball player. He tipped it back to himself. Georgia Southern playing predominantly a soft zone coverage, and, and this is very effective. Drop back, seven-step drop, let those linebackers take a deep drop, dump it off to the tight end. And he's, he's breaking tackles. This kid is such a talent. Just dropped the ball a second ago, which would have been a tough catch. He said, not two in a row, baby. There you see Quincy Carter after two seasons. These are the guys he's had more passing yardage than. Zaire, Couch, Manning, and Werfel. Shows you what he's done. Pitch goes to Terrence Edwards, and Terrence not going anywhere. And he Corey Middlebrooks out. was there to fall on top of him. Terrence. Jimmy McCullough made that play for Georgia Southern. Backside linebacker, stayed at home, did exactly what he's coached to do. Perfect position to make that play. And that is the end of the first quarter. We played 15 minutes from Sanford Stadium and the Georgia Bulldogs leading the Georgia Southern Eagles 7-0. In the sunshine band. Yep. Yeah, Georgia offense uh, only uh, yeah, three for three on third down conversions. Really have, have not put them in a position to, to have a long third down and long play other than the touchdown they hit to Darrell Robinson. Uh, first and second down, very successful for the Georgia offense. Steady rain falling as we begin the second quarter. Bulldogs second down and 18 from the 44. Toss goes to Darrell Robinson. He gets it to the 35-yard line, back to the original line of scrimmage. Third down, 10. And here comes that third down. You can't put yourself in these third and long. And good play here. You don't want to be in third and 18. Get something to, to close it down a little bit. Uh, more apt to get a third and 10 or third and 11 than a third and 20. Darrell Robinson looks smooth, doesn't he? He does look good. Quincy steps up and goes down. Oglesby, the true freshman in there for Paul Johnson's Georgia Southern Eagles, Carlton o Oglesby, defensive tackle, made the play, and it's fourth down. And, Matt, they got to Quincy that time rushing four. No blitz. Again, soft zone coverage by Rusty Russell's uh, Eagle defense. Irk's son, for those of you that have been under a rock for the last, uh, I don't know, what, 30, 40 years. Rusty Russell, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Southern. Got to Quincy with four rushing the passer. There is a flag on the field. It's the left 
Well, the illegal formation penalty against the Bulldogs was declined by Georgia Southern, and that'll put Georgia in a punting situation. See what Jonathan Kilgo can do. First punt of the season. He's looking to get it down inside the 10 somewhere. I know he's worked on this a lot during the offseason. Georgia kicking game, big question mark this year. There you saw the first quarter statistics. Georgia with a rather sizable advantage in passing and rushing yardage and the 7-0 lead. Kilgo. High punt. Going to be caught by Wansley at the 10-yard line. That's the way you're supposed to do it. Yeah, great. Great job by Kilgo. They really need this kicking game. If they're going to accomplish the things that they want to accomplish this year, the kicking game will have to be rock solid. You can't win conference championships. You can't be in the top ten nationally if your kicking game is subpar. So uh, Kirouac, Kilgo, the punt returners, whoever they may be, really uh, have to step up and get the job done. Steady drizzle continues to fall here at Sanford Stadium, first and 10 for Georgia Southern from their 10-yard line, just into the second quarter, and Georgia leading 7-0 on the touchdown pass from Quincy Carter to Darrell Robinson to end their first possession. Not an empty seat in the house this evening. Well, we said at the top, 86,000-plus here this uh, evening. It's the record crowd at the University of Georgia with the addition of uh, a few more skyboxes. Freddie Jones, the Georgia ticket manager, saying... For that October 7th game versus Tennessee, he could have sold over 100,000 tickets. Well, Adrian Peterson has had a pretty good first quarter. No one will ever forget the run of the century, one of the most incredible runs you've ever seen. Many people have compared him to Herschel Walker. Let's check in with Georgia Southern announcer Nate Hirsch for some memories. First down call, bring motion away, give it inside. Peterson breaks one tackle, breaks away 40. Peterson 50, Peterson still going to 40, 35, carrying people, he's still going to the 25, he's still going, he hasn't gone down yet, he's still going, he's inside the 15, he's down to the 13 yard line, oh my, Adrian Peterson. And back to live action. Didn't break many tackles there, but he picked up a good chunk of yardage on first down. He's a special guy, Matt. I spent a lot of time watching Adrian Peterson uh, being in Savannah area for the last five years and covering them the last two years and watching him on a day-to-day -day basis. Hard worker, great leader, good teammate, great attitude, and <laughs> needless to say, has a lot of talent. Second down, gain of uh, six on the play. So second down and four. Shouts out the instructions to his line. Peterson got it again this time, and nothing was doing. Looks like a check with me format uh, where the quarterback has an option to come up to the line. You've got a play call, and basically he's checking off from one side of the line of scrimmage to the other. Probably the play was called to the right. He checked off and went to the left. Looks like Demetric Evans was the one who got him around the ankles. Adrian Peterson with 41 yards on seven carries in the first quarter. Third down and four, ball at the 16. Revere going up top. Man on the far side being covered tightly by Henderson. It was Chris Johnson incomplete. Jonathan Sullivan, another one of these big-name freshmen in at defensive line, playing for Richard Seymour in there. Had a lot of heat on the quarterback. Seemed lining up right over the center. Gets back in uh, Revere's face, but Revere makes a nice throw here. The only guy that's going to catch that is Chris Johnson, and not a bad throw. Fourth down, Shelton on the punt for Georgia Southern, standing at his two. Damian Gary deep for the Bulldogs at his own 40. Fingertips, then he picks it up. And he's going to go down at the 29 yard line. It's a great punt by Shelton that hit it to 35 and took a six yard roll. So Georgia starts from their 28 or 29 yard line. I guess they'll spot it at the 29. Three minutes into the second quarter, and the Bulldogs leading Georgia Southern 7 0. 
talked with Rusty Russell, the defensive coordinator, earlier this week, and uh, Rusty's telling me that uh, they have a problem, and, and that's the fact that they have not had a good look at the Georgia offense from their scout team. Imagine, they're recruiting kids that run the option, the flex bone. Not a good look uh, as far as the scout team goes for a drop back passing scheme that they're facing with the Georgia Bulldogs. And Rusty uh, knew uh, coming in that that would be a big difference as far as getting his defense a look during the preseason. Hasn't been able to do that because of the recruiting styles. Well, I tell you what, though, it's a fun offense to watch. It really is. I mean, big plays all over the place. That's the great thing about Paul, what Paul Johnson's doing. Nobody's been able to stop it for crying out loud. I mean, these guys average 377 yards rushing a game. There are coaches all over the country that would die for that figure. I think they had close to 600 yards of total offense in the national oh, championship game. 655 yards. Yeah. And they still are in the books, in the Florida record books, even though they got beat by the Florida Gators 62-14 to 14 several years ago, they still have the highest rushing total ever against the Steve Spurrier football team, over 300 yards rushing against the Gators that afternoon. And it's not all Paul Johnson. He knows this offense. He runs the offense. But he has a guy that's the offensive line coach. It's really the offensive coordinator, Mike Seawalk. And Mike is his right-hand guy, and he, he directs this offense as good as Paul Johnson could. First and ten for Georgia as they start from their 29. And off goes to Sanks on the delay, and he squirms forward to the 31-yard line. Nice, the linebacker, was the first person to get to him and slow him down. A little quick, uh, quick pass draw play. You see one, two, three, show pass. Get those guys rushing the uh, quarterback and drop it off to Sanks, who's a tough inside runner. He's really developed into to being that. I know coming in here to Georgia, everybody expected to see the big play, but you have to have a guy that can run tough between the tackles. His only key is to hold on to the ball this season. Second down and eight. Quincy out of the gun. Steps up, fires. It is complete. Up to the 44-yard line, and Terrence Edwards. And a first down for Georgia. The ball has to be a little slick. Again, the rain coming down, you know, the ball's just a little bit wet. He steps up and throws a rocket right here. And look at Terrence Edwards doing what receivers are taught to do, catch the ball with your hands. Terrence is probably the happiest guy out here that they have so much depth and talent at wide receiver. He won't be seeing a lot of double coverage. Led the Bulldogs with 53 receptions a year ago. Scored nine touchdowns. First and 10, ball close to the 45. Michael in motion. Sanks goes to the left side, slips out of a tackle, up to the 50 and still on his feet and rumbles down close to the 45 before Gates finally gets him close to a first down. I think he's got it. Alex Jackson, George Foster, both in the game, Pate and Breedlove sitting the series out. Georgia has some quality depth on that offensive line. Good job of blocking that time. Jasper Sanks knows what to do with it. Picks up the big first down. Well, you mentioned the uh, you reserves know, the that are, are in. even bigger yep. than the starters, and, and that's something I'm sure the Donnan and his staff are very excited about as far as the offensive line goes. Big physical guys that can come in off the bench. Well, the thing about Georgia's offensive line is even though they're still relatively young, they already have plenty of experience picking it up last year. Quincy back to fire. LeBron Mitchell is open inside the 25-yard line and out of bounds at the 23. Another and the nice Bulldogs throw. start to open up a little bit. Absolutely. Another uh, great throw by Quincy. He's reading the defense, something that a lot of people say you can't do. Looked like he read the defense pretty good right there. Threw it to the right receiver, threw it on the money. First down, Dogs. First and 10, Georgia at the Georgia Southern 23. Don't know who this NFL scout guru was in this article last week, but uh, Quincy... I guess if, if he has a weakness or something to work on, his reading coverage. But, hey, every quarterback in the country is looking to improve as far as reading coverage. Probably the same one that would jump at picking Quincy in the first round. Absolutely. Jasper Sanks a big hole down to the 14, 13-yard line. Runaway train. Again, a, just a huge uh, hole right here. Followed the blocking of Jonas Jennings and Look at McMichael, McMichael just clearing in. his man out. And runs picked up over the, the linebacker, oh. Jones, and opened up a gaping hole yeah. on the left side. Leave the free safety unblocked. That's the guy that the running back has to take care of, and Sanks just ran uh, Ryan Haddon over. 
Second down and one. Ball is at the 14. You see Jasper nine carries and 59 yards. Sanks gets it again and has a first down and more inside the 10 yard line. And then the ball came loose after that. And let's see who has it. Georgia oh. Southern has it. Well, this is the uh, demon that plagued Jasper Sanks a year ago. That was the fumble. And here in the opener, after a nice six yard carry, he coughed it up. Let's take a look at it. What happened? Well, he made the wrong cut. I mean, he, he should be going outside of that block. And uh, gosh, it's been the thing that's held Jasper back. And Looks like you'll have to deal with some more criticism after this game because you know these sports writers will add be the first question they ask him after the game. What about the fumble? You bet it will. I know I've been there. <laughs> what about that interception, Baloo? Well, gosh, I just threw, you know, for 200 yards, 18 of 20. What do you want? Uh, they really harp on the negative. Let's see. We had a flag on the play. Are we going to bring it back? Here comes the offense back out on the field. No, the defense is coming out on the field. like an unsportsmanlike call was that that was that the call I believe it was a mark off against Georgia perhaps an unsportsmanlike call against Georgia after the play so the ball comes up to the 24 yard line so not only does Georgia Southern recover a fumble they get a 15 yard bonus on top of that and off goes to Adrian Peterson Adrian Peterson is wrapped up in the middle looks like uh, Demetric Evans was the one who grabbed him around the knees but uh, Peterson picked up about three yards you won't see Peterson fumble very much one thing about this guy he runs hard and you know you've got people grabbing at that ball uh, ripping at him he's he's keyed on everybody's going after him rarely puts the ball on the ground let me tell you Adrian Peterson is the real deal he's gonna join his brother in the NFL well no question about it question is why is he not playing for a division one program second down Revere Tosses for Weathers. Weathers tries to get outside, and big play on the outside by Jermaine Phillips, who has moved over from the offensive side to the defensive side this year and put a lick on him. But a nice pickup for Georgia Southern's Weathers here. Yeah, great play. Fake to Peterson. Get it out on the corner pitch. Perfect. Weathers, the big play guy for Georgia Southern out of that slot back formation. Jermaine Phillips, one of the highlights to this preseason for Georgia. Making the switch from receiver to safety, not an easy thing to do. They've been very impressed with his play in the preseason. Well, he played DB in high school at Roswell High School, and many thought that was his better position. When he came to Georgia, they had him at wide receiver, but here for his senior season, they've switched him over. Timeout called by Georgia Southern on a third and three at the 31-yard uh, line. Yeah, Jermaine, uh, or rather Adrian Peterson, going back to what you said earlier about why he was not recruited by a Division I school. Well, Florida recruited him, and yes. they ended up signing the running backs they wanted, knocked AP out of their, uh, didn't allow them to sign Adrian Peterson. Syracuse backed off at the last second. Uh, from what I understand, because they made the trip down, spoke with him, saw the stuttering problem. Yes. He had the grades. He had the test scores. People backed off. He has worked tremendously hard over these two years at Georgia Southern, and the Georgia Southern staff has done a great job working and getting Adrian help with that stuttering problem documented last week in the AJC, and he's really a special guy. Everybody loves to be around Adrian Peterson. Well, the only people stuttering now are the assistant coaches who are asked by their head coaches how they let this one get away. Isn't that the truth? Of course, Georgia Southern's glad everybody backed off. Indeed. His brother, Mike Peterson, was a starting linebacker for the University of Florida and now with the Indianapolis Colts. I'm very proud of his younger brother. Third down and three from the 31. Oh, ball is loose. Let's see who came up with it. I think Georgia Southern got back on top of it, or did they? I believe they did. The uh, exchange between Revere down. and Peterson Eagle. never happened. Well, it looked like the quarterback uh, exchange you'll see here. Yeah, he loses grips right there. And then AP trying to get the ball with his arm up, just like you're taught, ends up knocking the ball loose. Let's see, they come up short. Actually gained a couple of yards on the fumble, but they're short. It's fourth down. Let's see what they do here. Is the punter out there? I don't see the punter out there. They're going to go for it. Wow, what a gutsy call well, by Paul Watch Johnson. Try to draw him off sides. And then right here. Let's Long. see if that's what they do on Long fourth down and short. Team. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Yeah, they'll call timeout. There you go. Football. Oh, 
oldest trick in the book, Matt. Well, it's like that fake throw to third base <laughs> in baseball. Rarely it, works. Yeah, it works about 1% of the time. But it's a smart but thing But if to it do. works, yeah, what do you lose, really? You one haven't lost out. any. Well, you, do, you, you have lost a timeout. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing you lose. But it's a smart play. Guys get out there, they get zoned in, they, they're thinking aggressiveness on that line of scrimmage, and you know, they, time after time you see him jump off sides. Great discipline that time by the Georgia defense. Maybe Gary Gibbs signaled down. Look out for the long snap count. On fourth and one, Georgia Southern will now punt. Georgia leading the Eagles 7 0 here, 7 34 to play in the first half. Dogs up. Well, they're not lined up to punt. <laughs> wow. Well, let's see. Well, I would say safely this time they're not attempting to draw Georgia on sides. They've tried that trick once, have they not? So let's see. They really are going for it. Is that how Mummy on the sideline over there? Paul I'll Johnson. Say it again. A gutsy call by Paul Johnson. Give here. it to eighth day. No. Revere. Oh. And let's see. Did his second effort get it? He was hit initially. But his second effort may have gotten it, but they're going to have to bring the change out for this. Jamie Henderson thinks they've held him. They initially stopped him, but he was able to squirm loose for just a second and surge forward, and that's where they're spotting it, the surge forward, it's gonna be right close. at the 34-yard line. But they're going to have to bring the chains out to measure this one. It's going to be close. i tell you what, that was quite the call, and it's starting to rain a little bit heavier now here at Sanford Stadium. More than just a drizzle. Good day to be in the press box or a good day to have Here the old you go. show with you. Here you go. Stretch it out, and it looks like you they it. have picked up the first down. I tell you what, right there, you talk about a call. Paul Johnson just did it. Man knows what he's doing. Yeah, picked up a first. Well, you know, he's not national coach of the year three consecutive years for nothing. Isn't that the truth? I mean, this guy, one of the most quality head coaches in all of the land. Uh, Georgia Southern's going to have trouble holding on to him in the future. We now have an official downpour. It is raining pretty heavy right now. Revere oh, pitches yeah. to Weathers. Weathers at the 45 and stopped by Jamie Henderson who grabbed a shoelace and saved him from going a distance. Don't expect this rain to slow down the Eagle offense. Uh, I mean, th this option attack, they've really got down pat, and they, they run it under any conditions. First and 10 for Georgia Southern. Ball is at the 47-yard line. A lot of guts going for fourth and one on your own side of the field there by Paul Johnson. You're not kidding. Adrian Peterson down to the 44-yard line. Another big gain of close to eight yards for Adrian Peterson. Hey, we're in for a battle right now. I was getting ready to say Jonathan it myself. Jonathan Sullivan gets uh, just crushed at the line of scrimmage. Big hole for Peterson, and he's just pounding at you right now. Well, let now. me tell you, that call by Paul Johnson is more than just picking up a first down. He sends a signal to his players, I believe in you. I believe you can control the line of scrimmage. I believe you can pick up a first down in Georgia territory. He sent a message to his team by taking that call in Georgia. Revere keeps it himself and picks Reed. up a first down yeah. at the 40-yard line. Great read. Georgia playing the pitch there. Barrera up to take the pitch. He makes the fake, turns it up there. And Revere is a lot more physical than Greg Hill has ever been. Hill probably 165 pounds soaking wet. Uh, Revere, much stronger version of the quarterback, and you see it come into play here on the option. Well, you and I talked about it before the game in that we didn't really feel like Georgia Southern was getting much of a drop-off, if any at all, with the J.R. Revere taking over for Greg Hill. Now, Greg Hill did a lot of great things. They won a national championship. He set a lot of records. He ran that offense more perfection, of but Revere can do it too. More of a big play guy, Greg Hill, but Revere much steadier running the football. Revere keeps it goes down Gilbert and I don't know that he was supposed to hand that off to uh, Peterson or not well it's a read there he's reading this all the way you see him there looking at the line of scrimmage gets the fake it you was know. a good read because Peterson was wrapped up absolutely second down and ten there was a, a time under Tim Stowers uh, who preceded Paul Johnson where they did not read the option they are <laughs> you better believe they're reading the option now under Paul Johnson Second down and 10. Ball just outside the 40. A heavy rain falling here at Sanford Stadium. Ball goes to Adrian Peterson. This time, Terrence Smith 
was the one to grab him, but Peterson picked up about three yards. Looks like Peterson's run of 100-yard games, uh, unless something crazy happens. Uh, he might get 100 going, yards here in the, in the first yeah, half. Absolutely. We'll have to get an update on his yardage. He had 41 after one quarter. I'd say he's up probably close to 70 right now. Just my guess. We'll get some numbers a little bit, a little bit later on, and we'll keep you updated on that. But he may get 100 here in the first half the way he's going. Hey, we've got a fight here. These guys, these teams are going at each other. Well, I think it goes back to that fourth down call by Paul Johnson. He said, we're not going to be pushed around. Third down, ball almost slipped out of Revere's hands, and he cuts it back up, and Marcus Stroud collars him along with Clemens and uh, David Jacobs, and it's fourth down. And let's see if they bring Kerouac out, or rather, yeah, Baronis, I should say. Kerouac kicks for the Georgia Bulldogs and Baronis for Georgia Southern. Let's see if they bring him out to try a 52-yarder. I, I don't see any movement. Yeah, and with the conditions, perhaps in dry conditions, they might try it, but with it pouring rain like this, I think they're just going to go for it. Here comes another fourth down play for the Eagles, fourth and five. Titus and Johnson. Here's what's so tough about this offense. You've got to cover the you've got to cover the whole field here. And most teams just drop back pass in this instance. No telling what they'll do. Fourth down and five second time. They've gone for it on fourth down on this drive. Revere steps up. He's not going anywhere, and Georgia has stopped him. Quarterback draw, flag on the play. Could be holding on the Eagle offensive line. Boss Bailey stayed at home, and Chris Clemens did too, and they got him. They dropped back like they were going to throw, and then yeah, Revere was going to take up the middle on a quarterback draw, but the linebacker stayed at home. Legal motion against the offense. First down. I inadvertently said Boss Bailey, Will Witherspoon, who I was referring to, was right here. 46. Big stop by the Georgia defense. Lord knows if the Eagles take this in and score and make it a 7-7 game, uh, a lot of Georgia fans a little uneasy about that. But big, big step up by the Georgia defense there. They're really stepping up on third, and Eagles only two for six on third down. One for two, uh, on, one for three on fourth down. They've gone for fourth down three times. First and ten. goes to Bruce Thornton getting his first carry of the game. And Bruce down. Thornton up to the 50-yard line and down to the 47-yard line. And Bruce Thornton, after Jasper Sanks fumbled on his last carry, Bruce Thornton lines up at running back. People close to the program say this will be their big play guy this season. A little surprised we haven't seen Thornton until now. His first appearance, you see Sanks make the block. He makes one guy miss. McMichael with a block. Darrell Robinson working downfield. Thornton has that big play potential, and that's exactly what Georgia needs in the backfield, a running back that can bust the big one, provide the big play. They didn't have that last year. Well, Thornton didn't replace Sanks. Sanks just moved up to fullback. Exactly. First and ten. Which is probably where he should be. Toss goes to Thornton. He'll go to the left side this time. Nothing doing that time as David Young, the strong safety, knocked him down. Sweep to the wide side of the field. Eagles outnumber as far as the number of people they outnumber the dogs on that side of the field and see the uh, strong safety come up and make the tackle nobody able to get a body on him 247 to play in the half Thornton and Sanks both check out Who just joining us boss Bailey left the game early he was hurt on their uh, the Bulldogs kickoff after their uh, touchdown hurt his knee no further report but he is listed as doubtful to return. Milliken back in there now, blocking for Quincy, firing to McMichael, who can't hold on in the driving rain. And it's going to be third down and ten. Quincy, plenty of time to uh, throw the football. Again, the Eagles only rushing four people. You see four of them coming, a few stunts, has plenty of time to throw, makes the right read, delivers the ball. Not an easy catch in these conditions, but McMichael will be the first one to tell you he should have caught that football. Well, he made one of the most dramatic catches of the season in the Outback Bowl. Somehow found the ball in the middle of two defenders when Georgia came back and beat the Boilermakers on New Year's Day. Fancy again. And this time, did he stay in bounds? Yes, he did. Terrence Edwards stayed in bounds. 
and picked up the first down right at the 38-yard line. Again, plenty of time to throw, soft zone coverage, throw to the weak side, and get it to your big play guy, Terrence Edwards. Knows where that first down marker is. You hear all these uh, announcers talk about it time and time again. The receiver has to know where that first down is. And uh, Terrence Edwards, obviously a, a smart guy, too. Or maybe it's just great coaching by Greg Williams. Well, he found it and got outside of it and picked up the first down. First and 10 at the 38 with 2.15 to play in the half. and intercepted by Nate Gates at the 20-yard line. Overthrew Darrell Robinson. You know what's coming now, don't you? A former quarterback will tell you the ball's wet. Can't help it. Just overthrew it. You see it slips out of his hands, goes, yep. you know, just uh, wide, high, all the bad things. Uh, Quincy's freaking out as that ball's in the air. Well, it's uh, a pretty hard rainstorm here at uh, Sanford Stadium right now with 2.08 to play in the half, and Georgia Southern has their hands on the ball again. Bulldogs and Eagles in a battle. Second turnover by the Dogs, both in Georgia Southern territory. Revere keeps. And he goes down. Demetric Evans. Chris Clemens grabbed his ankles. 30-yard pickup, second down and seven. Paul Johnson told me earlier this week, J.R. Revere may get knocked around. Donnan said it. They need to knock him around to be successful against this offense. But J.R. Revere is the type of character where he will not be intimidated. One of the more confident people on this Georgia Southern team. And a little surprising to hear that being that this is his first career start. He's played a lot of football, but this is his first start. And the start comes between the hedges. in motion. Revere wants to throw it. A heavy rush. He lost the football. George is going to recover at the five. Rumbling in down to the three-yard line is Bruce Dream. The ball just slipped right out of his hands. Wait a second. Let's see what the official is going to call. Are they going to call an incomplete pass? The officials are going to rule that that's an incomplete pass. Hold we'll off on the celebrating. Let's, let's take a look here. Take the Peterson drops back. Looks like his arm's in motion. It really is. But on, it's a tough call. 50-50. Flip a coin on which way that goes. Now let's take a look at it one more time if we can. Looks like the well, ball did. Arm's in motion, but yeah. is it going forward? That would be the key. Let's see. You know he's winding up. He's got a long release. It comes out right. Boom. Here we go, there. and there goes the ball. I don't know that his arm was going forward at the time it slipped out, but look like the it. officials thought so, and that's all that matters. 1.20 to play in the half, third down and seven. Georgia Southern got the bullet. Handoff goes to Avery oh. Peterson, and Peterson has the first down. Watch one of these runs here up to the 42-yard line. I tell you what, you don't stop in pursuit of Adrian Peterson until you see his body flat on the ground because the guy just keeps going. Well, one guy won't bring him down. Let's take a look. Hand off. Look at the hole. I mean, the first guy that lays a hand on him is a backside linebacker. Cat Burnett looked like he bailed out there. Didn't want to take him on one-on-one -on -one coming right at him. Now, I really can't blame him. First and 10 at the 42. Over here for the receiver out of bounds. Piera knocks him out of bounds. They were looking for uh, Weathers. This clock stops with 62 seconds to play in the half. Seven to nothing, Georgia. Late in the second quarter. This is a fight, Matt. You bet it is. And with these weather conditions, I don't anticipate it changing in the second half. You would think offensively, Georgia Southern would have an advantage. Georgia is going to throw the ball a little bit more than the Georgia Southern style offense. Could be an advantage for the Eagles in the second half if this lane continues. Second down and 10. Peterson oh. just fumbled the ball and Tony Gilbert just recovered. Pay attention, folks. This is something you rarely get an opportunity to see. Adrian Peterson put the ball on the ground. Take a good long look at this one. You won't see it very often. Let's see what happens. Ball's there. It looks like he's bumped by his own offensive guard. Not expecting the contact that quickly. Ball's a little wet. Boom, it's out. 
So Georgia takes over at the Georgia Southern 46-yard line with 57 seconds to play in the half. And let's see if Georgia goes for the end zone. I imagine they will. It. I mean, instead of trying to set up a field goal. Under these conditions, I imagine the end zone is the only real option. Quincy back to pass, tried to set up a screen, now fires it in the dirt, now a flag goes down. Yeah, Georgia Southern holding on the play. Brett Milliken trying to get out in the little flat, and uh, looks like the defensive end got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Almost ripped his jersey off. Milliken's jersey still over his pads. Here it is. Holding against the defense. 10 yards from the previous spot. First down. Pretty good indication, you know, this holding when your jersey is below the pads. <laughs> so there's the mark off. And a first down for Georgia at the 36-yard line. 52 seconds, only five seconds ticked off. Georgia needs to get on the board here. 7-0, Georgia leading so far the touchdown pass from Quincy Carter to Darrell Robinson, a 12-yarder in the first quarter, oh. has held up. Reggie Brown in the game. And Reggie lines up at the bottom of your screen. Quincy, there he is. Fires to Reggie. Reggie, look out. Cuts into the middle Ooh. of the field and goes down at about the 23-yard line. That was a play that you saw Champ run all the time. Well, it's a great play when you have defenses really getting aggressive, pursuing, really an easy lane. You get the ball in a speedy guy's hand that can make people miss, and notoriously, you'll come up with a big play. First and 10 from the 24, 41 seconds. Quincy again, Man, fires, and there's Reggie Brown complete at the 12. Man, he's quick off the ball. This guy... Well, Georgia, Georgia fans, fans have been looking been forward to it for two years. Indeed, they've been waiting for him since he graduated from Carrollton High School, and now here he is. Man, he is quick off the ball. Looked like a sprinter coming off the line of scrimmage there. Showed you on the first play what type of athlete he is, and here runs a great route. He's a good route runner, too. Donnan said, look out for number one. He's a guy you want to pay attention to. Good advice from Coach Donnan. Well, he's come off the bench, and... Had two receptions right away. Georgia has called timeout, by the way. And there's 33 seconds left in the first half. And Georgia threatening to score here right before the break. I think we'll see a lot more of Bruce Thornton and Reggie Brown in the second half. Two guys obviously shown that they can uh, make the big play. I'm sure the Georgia fans looking forward to seeing a lot of those two guys because the big play is what they need. Last year really only had one guy, Terrence Edwards, mm -hmm. that was capable of taking it the distance at any point in time. Now they have two or three guys, and that's what the great teams in college football all have in common. Three or four different guys that can provide the big play on offense, and Georgia has it this year. Of course, they're only up 7-0. Take a look at some numbers on Quincy there, 12 of 18, 153, a touchdown and an interception. First and 10, ball is at the 12, 33 seconds to play in the half. And here comes the blitz. Georgia Southern crowding the line of scrimmage. Here they come. Quincy steps up, spins away, inside the 10, inside the 5, and Quincy takes it himself for 6. Quincy saw it coming too. Georgia leads 13 to nothing with 27 seconds to play in the half. Yeah, Quincy knows it's coming. First time he's seen it all day. Watch this little Barry Sanders move. Yeah, I mean, he learned that from Sanders, although we haven't seen Barry in a couple years. But uh, man, showing great athletic ability. Everybody knows he has it, and it's a good thing. Only place you see Barry Sanders, those video games the kids yeah. play. Quincy can do it all. Kerouac makes it 14 to nothing with 27 seconds to play in the half. What a huge touchdown that was. Georgia Southern giving them all they wanted in the second quarter. Looking like uh, another long drive by Georgia Southern. Boom, Adrian Peterson throws it on the ground. Here we come again. You see Nice coming up the middle. Ward coming up the middle. They came with an all-out blitz. Quincy just gets it done with great athletic ability. Makes a couple people miss, outruns everybody else to the end zone. 
I wish I had those moves. <laughs> well, the first of what will no doubt be many touchdowns for Quincy this season. Georgia leading 14 to nothing now late here in the uh, first half. What a big, big touchdown. Goodness gracious. Well, it came after the most uncharacteristic of things, an Adrian Peterson fumble. Don't get to see that very much. Williams will stand deep for Georgia Southern. And if you're a Georgia Southern fan, you have to be proud of the way this team has played in the first half. Again, giving Georgia all they want on offense. Defensively, Georgia Southern a little undermanned, but Rusty Russell has them playing great, solid football. Georgia took a uh, short drive into the end zone that time, but Georgia Southern's played solid football in this first half. Cheryl Wack takes off, squibs it up the middle, taken by one of the up backs up to the 32-yard line. That was Tony Gilbert on the stop. Don't you hate it when teams change numbers right before the first game? They number did. five, not on the roster, Yeah, folks. I was looking for number five, and I didn't find him. He's not afraid. I'll tell you, whoever number five is, he's not afraid to stick it up in there. The man with no name. So Georgia Southern from the 32-yard line with 22 seconds to play in the half. Five is Owens, by the way, wide receiver. There you go, Derek Owens. Oh. Oh. Georgia puts on a heavy rush. Marcus Stroud in there, and that, that's good to see. Haven't mentioned his name today, but with Seymour out, he's probably getting a lot more attention. You see him lining up there at left tackle. Looks like he's beating a double team, just overpowers. Number 74, he makes the play. Marcus Stroud from Quitman, Georgia, Brooks County High School. On the cover of Sports Illustrated. People in Quitman didn't know how to react when that came out. Second down and 10. And off goes to Adrian Peterson. He is met immediately by Jonathan Sullivan, the true freshman from Griffin, playing here in his first collegiate game. And that'll be the final play of that. And Marcus Stroud, that's a heavy load with those two guys laying on you. Well, we played 30 minutes from Sanford Stadium and the Georgia Bulldogs lead the Georgia Southern Eagles here in the season opener 14 to nothing. Certainly Georgia Southern has given Georgia quite a fight. And Georgia said coming in, they, they respected this Georgia Southern team. They, uh, the Georgia Southern coaches said they expected their team to play hard and that's exactly what we've gotten. He whacks it into the end zone and Williams will not be bringing that back. Anthony Williams instead of Andre Weathers. And Georgia Southern will start from their 20-yard line here to begin the second half. Heavy mist as we start the third quarter. Not as bad as it was in the second quarter. Looks like it could be clearing up just a little bit, and that's good news for the players. So first and 10 for Georgia Southern to start the third quarter. Well, they were able to run the ball, but then again, Georgia Southern's always able to run the ball. They, they need J.R. Revere to be a little more effective in the passing game in the first half. J.R. two of six for two yards. You need a little bit more production out of the passing game. You have to figure that they'll have to throw the ball with some success in order to get into this game, get back into it, trailing now by two touchdowns. As long as it was a touchdown game, you could run it, but you're down by two. You're going to have to eventually put the ball in the air, you would think. Well, they get big plays out of the passing game in this flex foam spread option offense. They get big plays out of the passing game, and thus far in the first half, zero big plays in the passing game. Peterson picked up about five on the play. That's Second about right, isn't five, it? Yeah. yeah, that's his average. Average 5.5 per carry in the first half. That puts him at uh, 80, 88, 88, yards. 88 yards and exactly 50 yards shy of becoming Georgia Southern's all-time leading rusher. Well, he already is if you count postseason numbers. I mean, nobody's touching this guy. He's over 5,000 yards if you count the playoff yeah. games. And they should count. They count the scores, don't they? Peterson goes down. Big tackle by Tony Gilbert, who had quite a game. Tony Gilbert will not play next week against South Carolina, so he's making up for it this yeah, week. Thank goodness he's playing today with Kendrell Bell out due to the phone scam deal. They needed Gilbert to come in and play tough. He made the tackle there, showed some good speed, good athletic ability. This kid's a player, just needs some PT. 
And he's getting it today, no question about that. Well, Adrian Peterson just lost four of the five he had just picked up on the previous carry, so now it's third down and nine from the 21. Big play for Southern, down 14-nothing. Need to make something happen here. Revere under a heavy rush, oh. fires and over the hands of his receiver, and then Corey Robinson stuck Derek Owens pretty hard around the 30-yard line, and it's fourth down. Ran a good play, deep... Uh, Deep curl by the outside receiver, inside guy running a flat and up. He had the receiver there, but really a tough throw, running full speed to your left under a little bit of pressure, overthrow. Can understand why, but definitely the receiver was there open. He for did the hit first the down. official. Yeah. Fourth down and nine, Shelton on the punt. going to scamper out of the back of it and Georgia's got themselves a safety and two more points. Season openers, man, Matt, you never know what you might see when you see come to check out a season opener. Things like this just seem to happen. You know, you practice these things over and over in practice. You have your special team segment of practice and you do all of these things and lo and behold, something always jumps up and bites you in the rear end. Shelton did a good job of just falling on it, getting out of bounds. Well, he did the smart thing because how many times have you seen a kicker who to do certainly is, is not a running back or a quarterback try to pick the ball up and run with it, and then they get tackled and they fumble, and then they end up uh, scoring a touchdown. As it is, the damage is limited to a safety, and Georgia now leads Georgia Southern 16 to nothing. Shelton, a smart guy from Savannah, Benedictine graduate, Military school down there, uh, they teach those kids the correct way to play football. Tommy Brackett and his staff do an excellent job. Sanks headed off to the locker room. We had had no uh, report of any injury. Yeah, he looks all right. Jasper Sanks, so. Got a little hitch in the giddy up, but nothing serious it looks like. Of course, Georgia's not yet been on offense here in the uh, second half, so he came out with the team at halftime. Now he's headed back in. What, did he get hurt coming on the field? I don't know. We'll get an update on that as soon as we can. So Georgia Southern will now have to uh, give the ball back, and it looks like Shelton's going to. He's brought out a kicking tee, so it looks like he may kick off. They have the option of kicking off or punting. It looks like they might take the option of kicking off here, and that looks like that what they're going to do with Shelton. Georgia, I'm sure, take all the points Georgia Southern wants to give them. Well, that's uh, about as easy a two as you're going to get right there. And the Georgia players motioning to the Georgia fans to get up and, and stand up and cheer a little bit. Look at these fans sitting back. No excitement at all in the stadium right now. Hard to understand. Thornton takes the kickoff at the 13-yard line. Goes to the outside. Across the 40, and Gates finally draws him, drives him out of bounds, rather, at the 42-yard line. You know, and that run back, pretty exciting stuff. What, maybe 10% of the, the fans standing up cheering. The stand side, it's a little tough to figure out. You know, you want to come out and support the home team, especially in the season opener. Get off your fannies and cheer a little bit. First and 10, ball at the 42. Sounds like a ball, play, ball player speaking. Well, it is. I mean, uh, and it has been, yeah. but, but an ex-player nonetheless. I guarantee you, when, back in the early 80s, these fans weren't reacting this way. And Terrence Edwards is down on the ground. My goodness. That was a way. What happened there? That was, that was far away from the play. Well, did like he? A sniper. Yeah, did he, uh, did he go holding, down? Was he in on the play? I, don't, I didn't know. He's holding his hamstring. He might, yeah. He's either cramping up or he yeah. pulled a hamstring. I think he actually, as he was going on the field, went down. I, I didn't see him go down, but I don't believe he was in on the pass play on the uh, kickoff. And uh, he might have just gone down making his way onto the field. Yeah, Quincy uh, found out what, what was going on, and he leaves dejected. Can't be good, but like a pulled ham. Yeah, he was not in on the previous play. And if that's what it is, oh, my goodness, we're talking four to six weeks to really fully recover. Well, I mean, it's all the conjecture truth of the, here, yeah. but yeah. let's hope it's cramps. The truth is that... Uh, Georgia can afford an injury there. You don't want to ever lose Terrence Edward or anybody, but 
They, Georgia does have depth there this year yeah. that they didn't have a year ago. That's a hamstring, Matt. So we'll get a medical report on that one. Boss Bailey has already left the game. He left on the uh, first kickoff after Georgia scored their touchdown. He was hurt on the special teams, hurt his knee. No uh, further word on the extent of that injury, but he left the ball game, and it was reported that he would be doubtful to return. We just saw yeah. Jasper Sanks make his way to the locker room, and now this Terrence is, Edwards. This is a killer deal last year, but as you mentioned, this year a more quality depth at wide receiver should be able to overcome. Well, LeBron Mitchell checks in for him. He's putting some weight on it as he leaves the playing field to the locker room. And off goes to Thornton. Thornton gets up to the 45-yard line. Good read. Really a good read. Didn't pick up a lot of yards, but he made a great cut there. As you'll see, running right behind Breedlove, Stinchcomb. Nothing there. Look at the quick move inside. Makes uh, Michael Ward miss. Picks up a good three, four yards. He's, he, he's, he's putting some weight on the right leg, and that's a good sign. And now a Georgia Southern player is down. I thought they had retired number eight. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe they should have. <laughs> For those who don't know why used we're saying that, uh, the man standing next to me, Buck Ballou, used to wear that number. Used to tell but John England, all Georgia Southern. And I hated though. it when England left a year early because it was the last chance for me to slip in the game. There's Quincy's stats. It was uh, Jason Neese, the linebacker, that was shaken up on the play, and he's being helped off the field. That's the one spot the Georgia Southern defense can uh, can handle a, a little injury. That their linebacker, the deepest position on this defense, he looks like he's okay. Yeah, they've got some players lining up at linebacker. Second down and seven after the three-yard gain by Bruce Thornton. Quincy fires off the hands of Javaris Johnson. So uh, both tight ends have had a couple of them glance off their fingers today. Well, you can see why Javaris Johnson would uh, have difficulty being that he has three cracked ribs that he's dealing with and a really a tight rib brace, uh, the flat jacket per se, and it ha has to affect his play. He's not used to wearing that. The report on Jasper Sanks is that he has leg cramps and he will be back. And again, easy and it is so humid here. Well, we were sweating just standing here in the press box. You can imagine what it's like running around on the football field. The rain has cooled things off a little bit, but not if you're playing. I imagine it's still quite warm down there. Hurts is harder. Fires almost picked off. Nice play by Dion Gates. Dion Stokes, rather, I should say, who broke it up, and it's fourth down. They were looking for Darrell Robinson on the far side. Yeah, good play. I mean, they're playing a soft zone again, and when you uh, run a drop-back scheme, the number one receiver is going to be that backside split in. That's where Quincy goes with it. Makes a fairly good throw, a little underthrown. Gave him a chance to make the play, just couldn't come up with it. Not nearly as nearly intercepted as I first if thought. If he makes a good throw up high, that has a chance of being picked. Down low is where you, you want the quarterback to throw it middle of the field, sideline to sideline, throw it low. The defensive players have trouble going down to intercept balls when they're low. Anthony Williams deep for Georgia Southern. They kick it away from him. It hits the 19 and rolls sideways out of bounds. And that's where Georgia Southern will start, right about there, about the 19-yard line. We are 250 into the third quarter, and the Georgia Bulldogs leading Georgia Southern 14 to nothing. 16 nothing. 16 nothing. Pardon me, you're right. 16 Forgot about nothing. That, Forgot that about safety. the safety. Yeah. 16. The safety coming on Georgia Southern's last possession when the ball was snapped over the head of the punter and Shelton scooped it up and slid out of the end zone. Who am I to be correcting you? That well, just sort of jumped out. I don't know where that came from. Well, I had the score wrong. You should correct me. I had forgotten about the safety for the sake of uh, being correct. We need to be, I need Chris to be Chambers, yeah, it's it just a smart play, getting on that ball, getting out of the end zone. You know, that's, that's the punter's worst nightmare, seeing that ball snap high. Peterson, 17 carries, 84 yards. Impressed with Peterson? First chance to see indeed. him in person, isn't it? Yes, it is, indeed. You know, uh, during the national championship game last year, which was televised on ESPN, the uh, color analyst uh, had a lot to say about Adrian Peterson, being critical in the fact that he may not be a high draft pick, looking down the road because he hasn't shown he can catch, hasn't shown he can block. I've seen enough practice at Georgia Southern to tell you, Matt, 
This kid can block. This kid can catch passes. I think everybody knows he can run with the football. He's the total package. I'm convinced that I was before the game started. Revere back to pass. Fires, underthrows his man. Did he catch it? Yeah, he got they it. They say he got it. Scooped it. Andre Weathers at the 25-yard line. You know, in conditions like this, you have to have receivers that can go down and make the play. You're delivering the ball where it needs to be. It may not be a perfect pass, which this is not. But watch Weathers go down, scoop it. Mm -hmm. yeah, nice it could be a little questionable, but it looked like he made the play. I think he did. It bounced around in there, but I don't think it hit the ground. Neither did the officials. Eight-yard pickup, second down and two from the 25. They need that type of play. Offensively, throwing the football, it helps their option attack. Peterson gets it again, and Peterson has a first down as he gets outside to the 30-yard line. Gang tackle. The only way to bring him down. No, nowhere to run. And Josh Millard in the game, watch him put pressure on the quarterback there. He's another guy, as I look at this defense, that has to come through. Good news on Terrence Edwards, just received word, suffered leg cramps. It is not a pulled hamstring. Great news for the Georgia team and the Georgia fans. That is good news. Now if they can get some good news on Boss Baylor. Yeah, I'm worried about that. First and 10, Revere back to pass. Fires, he has a completion over there on the far side at the 37. Uh, Jermaine Phillips picks him up and does a WWF body slam <laughs> on the receiver. Georgia fans know about that pro wrestling with Goldberg. They know all about that kind of stuff. Again, great in the passing game. This is just what Georgia Southern needs. Good executed pass play. Jermaine ropes and ties him and throws him down. Well, that move right there would have made Goldberg proud. Look, some of the Georgia fans are clapping. Amazing stuff. Second down and three. Ball at the 37 or thereabouts. And off goes to Peterson. Look at hole. Runs over a man. And across the 50 down to the 48. Have you noticed here, the, you see these free safeties and these safeties come up to make the play. They, they don't really take him on like they would normally take on a running back. Here we go, the straight first read on the option. Why not give it to AP? Makes two people miss. Runs over Jermaine Phillips. He tried to take He didn't rope on. tie Adrian Peterson. No slam dunk on that one. First and 10 of the 48. Perhaps a bit of payback. Payback's tough. Revere actually gave it to Peterson, and Peterson drives forward down to the 41-yard line. You know, people used to call me a smart guy for handing it to Herschel Walker, and that's what they'll be telling J.R. Revere the entire <laughs> season. You're such a smart quarterback handing it to Adrian Peterson. Look at this guy work. I mean, he's hit by a strong dude. Will Witherspoon. Yeah, who, who's, <laughs> and he moved who's him a back. physical guy, and, you know, three yards later, he, he's finding grass. Second down and three, ball at the 42. Georgia Southern mounting a drive here early in the third quarter. Touchdown, makes it interesting again. Peterson, oh, Coley. Actually, this is Coley, you're right. Edward, Edward Coley, Coley giving uh, Adrian Peterson a breather. Little blow, probably a smart move by Johnson. Coley picked up the first down. He's a tough player, but what a difficult spot Coley's in. I mean, how much PT will he get? <laughs> he won't see the playing field very much this season. But he is a player nonetheless. Coley picked up the first down, so first and ten. There's a lineman down for Georgia Dietrich Southern. Dietrich Everett, who? Uh, the senior. Let me go out on a limb here, Matt, and say he has leg cramps. Could be. You, you know when they start sticking those toes skyward? Mm-hmm. Baby, it's hurting. Those cramps aren't very fun. No, they're not. Yep. The leg is going to give out on him there. First and 10 for Georgia oh. Southern ball at the 37. Matt, I'm cramping up up here. My goodness. Get some fluid oh, in. Yeah, you where's need the an fluid IV at? bag? <laughs> I forgot my IV bags at home. Yeah, you knew that had to happen walking up to the stadium. It was so cool, but it was unbelievable. First and 10 ball at the 37 for Georgia Southern. Oh! Again, this time, they're waiting on him, Will Witherspoon. You see, Will had no problem throwing Coley to the ground. Coley probably about 20, 30 pounds lighter. 
Oh, he had a little help, too. I mean, <laughs> Marcus, Marcus Stroud. Stroud, yeah, you hit him, it's like running into a stone wall. And more than the stone wall, more like the Great Wall of China. Goodness, he's big. He is a big young man. From Brooks County, Georgia. Second down and 12. Severe tosses to Weathers. Weathers tripped up by Tony Gilbert again, who's had to chase make the down. most of his playing time. I tell you what. Oh, and uh, Gary Gibbs needed, if he needed any player to step up today, it was Gilbert. You see, he's just trying to run him down. Does a good job of doing it. Big third down play here. They did pick up six on the play, so third down and six from the 33. It's a long six. And let's see here. The officials have called a timeout for a moment. It looks like Weathers is having a hard time getting off the field. That's what's for. That gives them a little uh, opportunity to think over the play call. This, this may be the biggest play of the game thus far. Down 16 nothing. They've had a long drive. Desperately need to get in the end zone to make this a game in the second half. And it comes down to this play. Maybe two. I mean, doing what Paul Johnson did in the first half, this is perhaps a two-down zone or a four-down zone right here. Third down and six from the 33. Myers in motion. Snap is bobbled. Revere does a good job just to keep it in. Because Stroud came in there and tried to yank it from him. So it's fourth down. Another uh, problem with the uh, quarterback, the center exchange. This is a new center now. That yeah. And in the Anthony first game, th this is what keep, keeps coaches up late at night right here, going into the season opener. Just drives them crazy. They know these things are going to happen regardless of how many times they practice the center quarterback exchange. It, it's really a simple game, man. Well, Baronis has come on, Rob Baronis, and he's going to try a 50-yard field goal. Here. A tackle comes on late. Running down on time. They're inside five seconds. I don't know if they're going to get it off. They just did. Baronis, does he have enough? Just short and a little bit wide to the left nonetheless. Or on top of that. So Georgia holds again. The shutout remains with 6.56 to play in the third quarter. And the Bulldogs still lead 16-0. Got a few people stand up and give this defense a uh, little cheer running off the field. But you would have to say... Uh, a very laid-back crowd here at Sanford Stadium right now. Well, that's a big stop. Yeah, it is. You know, get it up is. and support the defense. I'm a little tough on the I, fans I'd today. They're, they're a little soggy. Now that must be it. Look at this. Fourth quarter, UCA, uh, UCLA leading Alabama 35-24. That's got to be close to a final So much by for now. that national championship, Hope. Well, first game of the season. Long Auburn, way to go. Uh, of course, Auburn, of course, beat Wyoming on Thursday night. Looked Florida good leading doing. Ball State. It's in the first quarter. Auburn's defense a little suspect from what I saw. Ole Miss, after struggling with Tulane for a while, laid it on him late. Oh, here we go. Reggie Brown, Darrell Robinson will be the wide receiver. That's what the Georgia fans want to see. Of course, they don't want to see Terrence Edwards from the sideline. That shook some people up in Alabama. Going, hang one up. Kenzie scrambling, fakes, runs out of bounds, and then goes down. Oh, that's not a late hit. Linebacker got him, Joe Scott. Looks like hit his ankles. Quincy wanted to get a late hit, yeah. but there's not going to be one, and I think that's yeah, rightfully so there won't yeah, be. expect the defense to chase you out of bounds. He's wanting the big play. He wants to get deep. He's got Reggie Brown on the post. Yeah, George is going only. up top there, wanted the big play. You got to do that a few times a game. Just hang it up deep. Georgia hasn't done that yet. They really haven't. First time they looked to, to get it down the field. Second down and 10. Mitchell in motion. Quincy on the keeper. Tosses oh. to Milliken. Tosses it out of bounds. Milliken had a good job. Had to do a good job just to cover that thing up. Georgia might want to keep that on the, uh, let Georgia Southern do all the option stuff. Quincy, this is really a run read. Look at that defensive end, waiting, waiting. Quarterback needs to turn that up. 
That UCLA score, by the way, was a final. The Crimson Tide. They give them credit for going out to play a UCLA. A lot I of give teams them a lot of credit in the that. first game of the season. Going to schedule a, you know, a team they can beat up on, but give them credit for at least taking them on out in L.A. There's a lot of teams in the conference that start with teams like Ball State. Yeah, like Florida. Third and 16. Not a good play call here. Quincy going up top. Up He's top. got Darrell Robinson, and it's broken up. Nice play broken up by Young. David Young, the sophomore strong safety, came over there, stayed up in the air a little bit too long for the well, defense to adjust. Yeah, and he, he's playing like he was coached. Rusty Russell has this defense playing a soft zone. They don't want to give up the big play, and they have not. Fourth down and 16, ball at the 29, and George is in a punting situation. Anthony Williams stands deep at the 34. Williams. Oh, Jermaine Phillips. He's been watching some wrestling or something. Yeah, it looks like he's a rodeo guy to me. He's rope tying these guys. Like he uh, grabbed the bull by the horns that time. Here you go. Got him on I the mean, shoulder pad. First look, you pick his face mask, but yeah. uh, he's got his jersey and shoulder pads. Yeah, he grabbed him by the shoulder pads. One score that was not on there on the update, of course, the stunner of the day, and that was Toledo beating Penn State in Happy Valley. And not just beating them. It's not beating Happy them. Valley anymore. No, you're right. They have officially changed the unhappy name. Unhappy Valley. Tonight, it's unhappy. Valley. Bear, Bear Bryant's record safe this year. Well, Joe Pa needed seven this year to get the record, and he started out 0-2. Yeah, I've been on Clyde Felton. And we just got the, the sports ticker with all the scores. Now, where's Valdosta State on this? Well, let's cover the Georgia teams yeah, a little bit. Five yards. You know, we got Remains Connecticut and Eastern down. Michigan. Now, where are the home teams? First quarter score, by the way, Southern Miss is leading Tennessee 3-0. A lot of people expected an upset there, too. Clemson's whipping up on the Citadel early in the third quarter, 31-0. See if anything else jumps out here. Notre Dame beat uh, Texas A&M 24-10. Big win for their head coach. They need some big wins. Firing out there. Nice catch by Williams, but Pierre knocked him out of bounds. It's incomplete. Love to see the replay there. Looks like he may have come down in bounds without Barrera knocking him out. Here we go. Little uh, quick sprint, looking for the out route. He's got it. Makes a good throw. Oh, that's... Tough, tough play by the official. Touch, tough judgment on that. But uh, I don't know. The replay looks like he may have come down in bounds here without the contact. Georgia Tech was losing to Central Florida 3-0 early in the second quarter. UCF. <laughs> Correct. Those people, yeah, they, they hate to be called Central Florida for some reason. Good play there by the Eagles. Get back to a third down and ten situation. Whatever. Ad yeah, Adrian Peterson uh, has been a little quiet here recently. Maybe he's cramping up too. Matt hadn't heard much out of Peterson the last two drives. Well, it's, he's been kind of quiet after that four-yard loss. Remember he's he Superman. Was, he was thrown for that four-yard loss. Superman never cramps up. Third down and eight. Ball at the 30-yard line. Revere back to pass under a heavy rush. He's going to go down. Quarterback sack for Bruce Adreen. And Demetric Evans there also. And coming into the season, man, I said I had to believe that these two defensive ends, the two defensive end positions, had to rise up and get some sacks. I mean, with those two tackles that Georgia has, they'll get double teamed a lot, particularly on third down, which means these defensive ends have to make some big plays. And it's good to see Adrien and Evans in there getting the job done with Charles Grant out, who is really their only big play guy at defensive end. 
their quarterback sacker, leading quarterback sacker from a year ago. Shelton snap gets back to him this time, and that's a short kick. Red. Damian Gary Red. takes it at the 45 and steps out of bounds. Georgia Southern 0 for 3 on third down attempts in the third quarter. Don't get many points when you can't convert on third down. You know, there was a point in this ball game where it looked like Georgia Southern, and the game's not yeah. over by any means, but it, it was a much tougher fight at that point when they went for it on fourth down here at the 34. They still trailed only 7 nothing, but later in that drive, they faced a fourth and five and didn't convert, and it's... And it's they been haven't been... Game yeah, the uh, they have not been the same since then. They have accepted the fight, though. Effort, not a problem for the Eagles. First and 10 from the 46. And off to Thornton. And the balls and blockers there. And does across the midfield stripe down to the 48. He's slick. I mean, looking at him in the first half, you think he's just an outside runner. But watch this. Good lead block by the fullback, Hayes. And he finds a way to make three, four, five yards just by turning his shoulder pads, being slippery, things that uh, you really can't teach a lot. And congratulations to uh, junior running back Veron Hayes. He was a walk-on, earned himself a scholarship That's bad during the preseason. See. Second down. Thornton gets it again. This time, Pascada is there to get him. Stenson got beat on the inside. First time we've heard from Freddie Pascada tonight. And Pascada, 17-year-old freshman last year as their leading quarterback sacker. Just beat Stenscombe inside, just a matter of quickness. You know, sometimes those little guys can outquick those big guys. He started last year as a 17-year-old freshman out of North Cobb High School and led the team in quarterback sacks and tackles for loss. As a freshman. Yep. They didn't expect that out of him. You need players, you know, that you don't expect to do things to step up. Makes the team stronger. Third down and seven from the 49. Quincy back to pass, fires, and there is mm, Terrence Edwards. Is that a completion? No, it's an incompletion. And he's cramping up again. Perfect play. I mean, you can't draw it up any better than this. Line does a good job with the blocking. Quick quick pass. He had Little it. quick slant. I yeah. mean, the ball's there. Terrence is uh, thinking about those legs cramping up instead of catching the football. The Georgia Southern fans thought it was a completion, but on the replay, I think it was pretty clear that he was juggling the ball when the defender got there and disconnected him from possession. Anthony Williams stands deep for Georgia Southern. He'll go on the line drive kick, and Williams comes up to take it on the drive at the 24. Looked like Andrew Jones coming in to field a short line drive. <laughs> This kid's a big play player for him, Williams. He's made some big plays for the Eagle offense, and particularly in special teams. This guy can fake it the distance. Eagles have a lot of those players. Georgia Southern starts from their 29 with 310 to play in the third quarter. You know, really the big difference when you look at the top one AA teams in, you know, a Division I power is the line of scrimmage, the strength, the size. And I think both teams have athletes. Look at this formation with three receivers lined up one, two, three behind each other. And now one of them goes in motion. Did he turn up field too quick? Apparently not. They throw it out there to the far side. And out of bounds is Mike Myers. First touch for Myers today. He's another guy that Paul Johnson believes in. One of those guys that can provide the big play. One of the fastest players on the team is Myers. Just trying to get in the ball, let him work out there. Barrera makes a good play trying to force him out. Hollingshed's come into the ballgame for Georgia at linebacker. Now another one of their uh, linemen is down. That is the, uh, that's Charles Clark, the sophomore, making his first start this afternoon. Evening. It was afternoon when we got here. Yeah, it's dark now, though. Yeah, this is, this is a spot where the Georgia Southern doesn't have a lot of quality depth, and that's on the offensive line. And their only returning starter, Michael yeah. Anderson, just chucked out of the ballgame. So they have an entirely new offensive liner, new from the standpoint none of these guys started last year. Revere back to throw. Fires to Owens, who has it at the 40-yard line. First down. And a first down. So Georgia Southern starting to show an ability to air it out. 
and they have the ability to do that. I mean, J.R. Revere is a quality thrower. Steps up, delivers the ball. A little uh, new wrinkle with the three wide receiver looks stacked up behind each other, and Paul Johnson told me earlier this week that they would show a few new wrinkles, but for the most part, this would be Eagle offensive football, and that's what we've seen. Got to have a new wrinkle every now and then. Well, there it is again. One, two, three, and Myers is the one who goes in motion this time. Revere, and fire out there to Williams this time, and he goes down. Did they grab him by the face mask? No. Apparently not. Vieira just grabbed him up high and brought him down. Ferreira is a big physical looking kid. To be lining up a safety. These two Georgia safeties, Cat Burnett and Barrera, only being sophomores. I mean, the next yeah, he brought him down next with three years. Hand, look for great play out of the Georgia safeties. They are talented, they are big, they are physical. That was a one arm tackle. All the things you want them to do. Second down and 11, right at two minutes to play here in the third quarter. Now they line up the three receivers at the bottom of your screen. They like this formation. Well, it's, it's worked for a there couple of plays, and there's uh, oh. Myers. Oh. Ooh, and got stuck hard. Jermaine Phillips. Yeah, he made Witherspoon miss, but then he ran into three other dogs. Well, Jermaine Phillips is the one he really ran into. Yeah, so, ooh. But I think, uh, I think it, jock, Will. There it is. Phillips trying to uh, establish his reputation as a heavy hitter. He's just glad to get some PT, get yeah. some playing time. Indeed. Third down and 10, ball at the 41. Oh, we're back to pass under heavy rush. Millard has him. The ball has come loose. And Paul Clemens is trying to pick it up. And finally, one of the linemen jumped on top of it. It's going to be Georgia's ball. Marcus Stroud came up with it back at the 19-yard line. Well, Josh Millard is the one who made it happen, hitting from the blind side. Chris Clemens, the freshman. Oh, he is just so up. quick. I mean, he's by that offensive tackle, and he's gone. This is a guy that Georgia fans, especially in the Savannah area, why doesn't Josh Millard get more playing time? Because this is what they see. Big play after big play, the sack from the defensive end position. That's what you get out of Josh Millard. Georgia fans want to see more of that, but I try to explain to them. You play him on first and second down versus the run, it's a different situation, but versus the pass, nobody's better than Millard. First and 10 from the 18 now for Georgia as they threaten to blow it open. Toss to Dewan Green. He is hit hard by Young. A lot of Georgia fans know Dewan Green is wearing number 33, but he has changed numbers in the offseason, going with 27. Can't blame him after the tough freshman year he had. Yeah, it all started in the season opener last year when he had a jaw fractured against Utah State. Uh, this is a play out of the old Georgia playbook, sweep right. Uh, we have another Georgia player coming off the field here, and he's shaking up. Who we got? Randy That's McMichael. That's Randy McMichael. And he has cramps. Yeah. This is not unusual. Never got cramps playing out here. Maybe it's because uh, you know all I was doing was handing off. I was getting ready to say you just apparently weren't doing enough. I took but. that line out of. <laughs> I took that line from you, didn't I? Yeah. I tell you what, you just weren't doing enough. You got to break a sweat. Obviously a problem today. Second down and eleven. Brings he back the pass. Fires complete inside the ten yard line to Damian Gary. First and goal for the Dogs. A lot of weapons to choose from this year for Quincy Carter. Damian Gary now getting his opportunity at wide receiver. Look at Quincy looking back, coming back to the backside. Good read by Quincy Carter. I hope that NFL scout that criticized him last week was watching on that play. He looks left. That side of the field is covered. He comes backside, delivers the ball on time. First Jermaine, down and goal. Jermaine Phillips has checked in on offense. We've got a two-way going here. Maybe Donnan's going to reward him for all those big hits. They hand it off to Milliken, and Milliken stopped at the six. Oh, my goodness. And then Kyle drive. Somebody lost their helmet. That was uh, Kevin Hurd, the uh, freshman linebacker. Don't you know that's a scary thing? You're out on the football field playing defense, and your helmet comes off. Yep. 
Oh my goodness, get down, cover up. And that is the final play of the third quarter. We have played 45 minutes at Sanford Stadium. The Georgia Bulldogs leading the Georgia Southern Eagles by a score of 16 to nothing. Last year, the Eagles captured the school's fifth division 1AA national championship led by the heroics of Adrian Peterson and Greg Hill. Now Eagles fans have a chance to relive the championship season with a one-hour documentary that showcases all the unforgettable moments. First down call, bring motion away, give it inside. Peterson breaks one tackle, breaks away 40. Peterson 50. Peterson still going to 40, 35. Carrying people. He's still going to the 25. He's still going. He hasn't gone down yet. He's still going. He's inside the 15. He's down to the 13 yard line. Oh my, Adrian Peterson. I tell you what, that tape right there is worth just the 58-yard run. If you've got yeah. nothing but one hour of replay you know, in the 58-yard run, it'd be worth it. There's so many other highlights that this guy has put up. Uh, we went to a game, watched them play the Citadel two years ago. They're down by 14 points. He scored uh, five second-half touchdowns, and they blow out the Citadel. Well, George is getting ready to blow this one open if they can punch it in right here as we start the fourth quarter. Second down and seven. Second and goal from the seven for the Bulldogs. Well, they have you know, a couple of options. Obviously, pound it right at that undersized eagle front or a little play action pass. Darrell Robinson checks in with the play. And now with the clock the running winding down. down to four seconds on the play clock, Georgia burns a timeout. Once he's got a little gripe with the official. That is the first timeout used by Georgia here in the second half. Quincy is not happy, and, and he's telling that official all about it. I'm wondering what the uh, complaint is. You call that leadership, Matt. Maybe with the play clock running down, probably not the smartest thing to do, but timeouts don't seem to be uh, coming at a premium today, at least in this situation. And now Coach Donnan wants to know what was going on. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bulldogs will be on the road next week. SEC opener coming up next Saturday against the South Carolina Gamecocks. Georgia Southern will be at home for their home opener against Johnson C. Smith. Let's take a look at the stats while you look up that South oh, Carolina 14 score. Nothing. 14 nothing. Playing New Mexico State, a team Georgia will play here in three weeks. There you see the third quarter stats. Georgia now leading in the rushing category. Still a sizable exam. Uh, advantage in the passing category and in total yards this is well below Georgia Southern's average you would have to say Georgia's defense under Gary Gibbs has shown uh, some good things here today facing a very tough option offense he is still he is uh, still cool calm and collected over here next to us They're pitching a shutout right now second down and seven Second and goal from the seven. Quincy rolling to his left. Running. Looking. Fires over everybody's head because nobody was open. It's going to be third down. Again, good decision making by Quincy Carter. Comes out. The three receivers that he uh, has options to throw to are all covered. What's the smart thing to do? Either run the football or throw it out of bounds. Good decision making by the quarterback. Who says this guy can't make, can't make good decisions? He's made them today. Anonymous NFL scouts. <laughs> and Coach Donnan, when I talked to him this week, we were referring to He's the article. That, about yeah, that. He was, and he said that the article really bothered Quincy, too. So, Well, you could tell from his comments. Third down and seven. Third and goal from the seven. Quincy back to pass. Fires in the middle. Yes. Touchdown to LeBron Mitchell. 22 to nothing, Georgia leads. Stuck it in there right where he needed to stick it, and it's a dangerous throw down here inside your own 10-yard line. You really have to stick it and pick your spots. Good strong arm, look right between the two linebackers. Yep. LeBron found the uh, open area, and Quincy put it right where it needed to be. But it was a laser. It really was, strong arm. 
He showed it off there. Kerouac. Makes it 23 to nothing. Extra point is good. My goodness. Well, several first here for a couple of young Bulldogs. That was the first touchdown of LeBron Mitchell's career. And uh, earlier we had the first touchdown of Darrell Robinson's career. LeBron has earned it. I mean, he really has. He's put in a lot of hard work while he's been in Athens. It's good to see him uh, get to cash in on a little of that. Such a versatile guy. I mean, he could play defensive back. He could play quarterback, wide receiver. And he must be a good team player because you've never heard him complain about a lack of playing time. Well, he came here as a quarterback out of Marietta High School and at least briefly was at that position but quickly was moved to wide receiver. That'd be uh, interesting to see if any of these freshman quarterbacks get in the game. You know what's crazy? Georgia just scores a touchdown. Georgia fans really don't get off the seat. And here a couple of uh, scores come across, and now they're standing up cheering. Times have changed. There was a day when these Georgia fans would rock the stadium. We're 11 seconds into the fourth quarter, and Georgia leading 23 to nothing. You, your point is valid. There was a louder cheer for scores involving some rival Just schools than it. there was for Georgia's touchdown. Just don't understand it. Kickoff is taken by Anthony Williams, who tries to cut to the outside, and Ryan Fleming trips him up at the 17-yard line. Now we're hearing him. Ryan Fleming, another guy at linebacker that may be seeing a little playing time. Next week, maybe. A junior out of Panama City. One of those guys who's been in the program just waiting for his turn. And you have to prove yourself on special teams. A nice little clothesline around the ankles. So Georgia Southern now down by 23. Oh, that's it over here to Weathers, who's streaking up the sidelines and knocked out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That was close to a lateral. It really was. Looked like a double pass, yeah, I was thinking, did. as the ball was thrown out there. Maybe that's why the safety's not so quick to jump on that. We'll need to do a little research, find out when's the last time Georgia Southern was goose egg. Didn't happen very much under Paul Johnson. It's got to be a first. And Peterson, I, I don't think he has 100 yards, man. I don't think so either. He He's was close. close. He yeah. was close at halftime. One big run, he'll get it. Of course, he could care less about that, really. Knowing him, Adrian could care less about those personal, individual things. He's a team player. Well, they just gave it to Adrian Peterson, and he gets up to the 32-yard line. Stopped by Tony Gilbert again. Pardon me, I believe that was a dream. Well, Tony Gilbert might have been it. Tony Gilbert has been on in a number of plays tonight. He's had a great ball game. And thank goodness that he's the one guy that needed to step up and play tough. You know, facing a fullback like Peterson, you know he was going to be uh, faced with uh, situations where he had to step up and play tough football, and Gary Gibbs has seen him do that. Second down and five. Revere tosses to Myers. Myers has the first down and goes out of bounds at the 41-yard line. It's been over four years since Georgia Southern was shut out. December 2nd, 1995, they lost to Montana in the quarterfinals, 45 to nothing. Hmm. And that was their worst yeah, Eagle fans loss like ever. to forget about that one. Worst playoff loss ever. Well, this offense is fun to watch. I mean, they had no points on the scoreboard, but uh, hey. Look out. I tell you At what, any moment, they could break it. You just watch Gibbs, that option. A dramatic turnaround from a Georgia team that gave up an average of 26 points per game a year ago and dead last in the conference in yardage given up. We've seen a dramatic difference. Now that's a lateral as they fire it out there to uh, Weathers, who gets a first down over on the far side to the 46-yard line. So Georgia needs to keep their heads on straight about that play because they keep throwing a lateral out there. Eventually, you're going to anticipate them Winging it Made down that the little, field. Uh, little holding there on Barrera. Official missed it. Again, Gilbert on the tackle, chasing somebody down. Andre Weathers. 
That's a big play there. And uh, hey, if it, it works, hey, keep using it. It has worked. Keep going with it until they stop it. Twice now on this possession. So first and 10 for the Eagles at the Georgia 46. Of course, you're up 23 nothing. Let them throw it underneath. Mm -hmm. Just don't give them the big play. Here they come again. Three wide outs to the same side. Revere fires. Chris Johnson has it at the 41, and Tim Wansley was there to stick it. And that ball was tipped on the line of scrimmage. Johnson, an excellent job of maintaining concentration. Let's see who got a hand on that football. Oh, I just. Yep. Someone did tip it. Good tackle by Wansley. This Georgia defense has tackled tonight better than they tackled all of last season. Well, they've been wrapping up. Adrian well, the, Peterson's yeah, broken the, a few, but he breaks yeah. a few against everybody. Exactly. But the defensive backs in particular, stepping up, making open field tackles, something they didn't do last year. Adrian Peterson across the 40 down to the 38 and shy of the first down by a couple of yards. He might be getting close to 100 now. We'll have to get an update on his numbers. Third down and four. Well, Eagles are 0 for 4 on go. third down. Yeah, he's gone over 100. Well, good for Adrian. And there he goes again, bounces off a man. Vieira wraps him up, and he falls forward to the 30. One man will not bring him down. Witherspoon just experienced that again. See right here. Of course, he has a blocker all over him, but one guy won't bring him down. Barrera coming up, showing his good tackling ability. He's a physical, strong safety. He's shown that tonight. All in all, the Georgia defense has played uh, pretty good football. You have to like what Gary Gibbs has done. And there's not a calmer person in the stadium. He's sitting right next to us here than Gary Gibbs. First and 10. Ball at the 30. Goes Peterson again. Was hit initially by Tony Gilbert. So Peterson uh, in excess of 120 now. Kind of lost track of where he had been. Yeah, I mean, he's been fairly quiet here in the second half. He's fun to watch. Not fun to tackle. There you go, 133 the uh, totals right now. 25 I mean, for 133. You're playing defense and you're facing Georgia Southern. Uh, you're not looking forward to that challenge. Second down and seven, ball at the 28-yard line. Revere wants to throw under a heavy rush. Gets away, throws it away. Again, two, look at the two defensive ends back there. Adreen, Evans. Evans having a nice little chat with Jr. there. What do you think they're saying? But I think that, I mean, these two guys, they have to step up this season in SEC football. They have got to make some plays on third down, on pass plays, because those two tackles are going to see a lot of double teams. It's good to see those guys being active, making things happen. And third when, down and seven. And when Grant comes back, now they really have something special if these two guys can prove themselves. Revere, heavy rush, fires up top. Good throw. And oh. in and out of the hands. Good coverage by Jamie Henderson, but that's a perfectly thrown ball. That Owens has to come out. He has to come yeah. up and make that play. That was a nice pass. Owens didn't come up with it. That's what he's thinking right now, jogging back to the huddle. He's embarrassed. He's shamed. Revere saying, my gosh, I can't put it there any better than that. Make the play, please. Quarterbacks get a little irritated when the guys drop passes like that. That was a nice pass. Fourth down, and they're going to bring on Baronis for a 44-yard field goal attempt. Watch it. It's going to be wide to the right. And Georgia's shutout is still intact with 11.06 to play in this game. Well, you know, uh, the, the attitude.
attitude coming up here for Georgia Southern, talking with both Rusty Russell and Paul Johnson this week was, look, we're going to come out there, we're going to play hard, we're going to run our offense, we're going to run our defense, and we'll let the chips fall where they may. I mean, for the most part, they've played good, solid football here tonight. They've put up a fight, which uh, you have to say a lot of one double up double-A teams would never be able to do against a talented team like the Georgia Bulldogs. Well, Georgia's deeper than they have been, ever have been in the Donnan era. And you know another thing, too, everybody's putting everything on this season. Man, if you look, I mean, the next two or three years should be exciting football. They've got a ton of talented oh, yeah. freshmen and sophomores. But I, mean, I, I, I think a lot. one-year thing. No, here. it isn't. Georgia should, uh, sh Georgia should be ready for a pretty good run of success here, but I think a lot of the expectations are centered around the belief that this will be Quincy's last year here. Yeah. Well, they've got some talented freshman quarterbacks. One of those guys will step up. Quincy tosses over here to Reggie Brown. He gets a block. Look He's out. at the 35, up to the 40, and then ran into uh, Hayden. Hadden, rather, at the 40 yard. You just get a sense when he gets his hands on the ball that, hey, he could take it the distance. Good play call, fake sweep, back screen to the uh, split end, gives him some room to run, a lot of green grass. Tried to make one too many moves there, but uh, look out. Reggie Brown, look for number one. He's a guy to watch. He, he really went down just trying to make a cutback or trying to spin around there. It really wasn't tackled. Or not take a hit. Didn't you always try to avoid being hit as much That's as possible? That's the best thing I did, Matt, was get out of the way. First down and 10. Ball at 38. Yusa Smith gets his first carry. Okay, he yeah. picks up a first down and goes to the 50. One of those young kids we were just talking about in general. Yusa Smith. The fans like it. Listen to the fans. They're finally up cheering a little bit. This is one guy that gets them excited. They've read all about him in the offseason. Big things expected. He looked good there. Very aggressive run, turning it up, taking on a tackler. Nothing shy about Smith running the ball. Ball now at the 49. Jason Rader in at tight end. Georgia playing a lot of people here in the second half. Terrell Robinson and Reggie Brown down on the bottom of the screen. Corey Phillips, David Green warming up on the sideline. Musa Smith again down to the 40-yard line. He's got a couple of carries and close to 20 yards. Hey, he knows what tough football's about. He played in Pennsylvania. They play great football up there on the high school level. Look at this burst right there. Runs right by two blockers, two tacklers. Big burst of speed to get him up through there. And, fine, and Nick Kearns just finally got in front of him. <laughs> That's about all he did. He's got his body out in front of him. Second down and one after a nine-yard gain. So two carries over 20 yards from Yusa Smith. He gets it again. Look at that. Finds another big hole. Boy, this kid. He's down to the 29, and the fans like that. Give me the ball, y'all. Hadn't grabbed his ankles, or he might have scored. I mean, this is fun to watch. This kid is something special. Look at this cut. Right off the guard, a little burst of speed. He sees that end zone and he smells it, man. He's going after it. I would say Jasper is I looking at some incentive to hold on to the ball right now. Well, he, he could probably be lining up at fullback a little more than, uh, and, and it really is, realistically, the best position for Saints, especially with these talents they have lining up at running back. Well, whatever position he lines up in, holding on to the football will be required. Yusuf Smith. Up three yards down to the 27. Jasper has played since the fumble. He hasn't been benched, but I don't yeah. know that he's gotten a carry since the fumble, has he? Cramped up. I mean, is this pay-per-view telecast going to Pennsylvania? <laughs> it sure looks like it because Musa Smith, Musa Smith wants to put on a show, and by golly, he's doing it on this drive. Clock ticking down to 8.35 left in the game. I don't think uh, Muse is necessarily interested in <laughs> impressing the folks in Pennsylvania, just the man with the headset on called Coach Donovan. You're right, Matt. Quincy fires in the middle for Reggie Brown inside the 10-yard line. Tell you what, this Georgia offense would be fun to watch. That, that's not exactly going out on a limb at this point. See a lot of the second team uh, line in there, Foster. 
Good protection. Quincy reads the coverage. Big uh, opening in the middle of the field. Southern playing a cover two zone. That's where the soft spot is. And Reggie found it, and Quincy delivered it. First and goal, Bulldogs at the eight-yard line, leading 23-0 now with under right at under eight minutes. Musa Smith, they're, they're calling for him. Four carries, 34 yards on this drive. Crowd wants to see Musa get the ball. And he does. Look at him drives down to the two-yard line. Look out. That has us Georgia fans up out of their seats. And it's just fun to watch. Breed love pulling. Didn't lay a hand on anybody. Musa says, I can't wait on you, Kevin. I tell you what, uh, Musa didn't get in the game until the fourth quarter tonight. I think he'll get in earlier next week. He looks good. He does. Gosh, he's aggressive when he gets that ball. You know, Adrian Peterson said he expects to score every time he touches it. Well, it looks like Musa feels the same way about running the football. Five for 39 now for Musa. Second down and goal. Phillips is back in there on offense. They toss it to Musa. There he goes. He's got his first career touchdown. And Georgia leads 29 to nothing. Well, there's another one. LeBron Mitchell, Darrell Robinson, now Musa Smith scoring what will no doubt be the first of many career touchdowns. And that's the, uh, one of those plays the Georgia people uh, recognize there. And look, at, isn't this beautiful to see? The Georgia fans standing up cheering. It took a freshman running back to do it. Sweep right, he sees the green grass and takes it. And he's saying, baby, I can play this game. Give me the ball, because I'll make something happen. Kerouac on. And that one is no good. He pushed it to the right of the pipe. Jermaine Phillips in the game. Motion right, he gets comes back, makes a good block. And Hayes it's just and a foot race, yeah. And, I mean. and, and Veron Hayes, who lined up at fullback, threw a nice block there for Musa. That's the Georgia Classic. Sweep right. How many times have you seen that through the years? 7 4 to play, and the Georgia Bulldogs will no doubt start this season 1 0. 29 to nothing, they lead the Georgia Southern Eagles. It's been impressive to see here in the second half. So many different guys stepping up with big plays. Yes, they did. Uh, and, uh, Georgia could have easily lost that game. I don't think the Bulldogs want them on the schedule no. anytime soon. They're not afraid to play anybody. No. This is Stokes, and he goes down at the 19. Darren Hayes down there making the play. Again, as you mentioned, walk on, earned a scholarship this preseason. Quarter. Georgia, you really don't hear it much. Everybody talk when they talk about walk-ons, they talk about the Nebraska program, but I mean, through the years, the Georgia walk-on program has been phenomenal. In this case, earning a scholarship. Georgia coaching staff shaking hands next to us. They feel like this one is uh, under control. Weathers is going to go down over there. Clemens, the freshman linebacker who's played a lot tonight, made the stop. Here's a trivia question for you. Speaking of walk-ons, what walk-on holds the record for quarterback sacks at the University of Georgia? That would be uh, the Frenchman. That's right, Richard Tardis. In business and doing well for himself in the Atlanta area. I thought it was Tardis. This guy was a terror rush rushing the quarterback. Indeed he, he was. He made for a good story, too. He still it? holds the record. Walked on, did not know a thing about football. Didn't even know how to put on his pants. Didn't know where to line up. And off of Adrian Peterson, nice spin move up to the 37-yard line. Adrian still plugging away. Linebacker like it is. I'd have to say when Adrian Peterson starts getting paid to play, I hope a local team takes a look at him. Yeah, <laughs> Sign up with the Falcons, please. He long ago broke the record if you count the postseason. He's going after 200 yards now. Playoffs yes. and a back-to-back -back national championship opportunity. And again, and Georgia Southern didn't put too much into this game. They knew coming in, odds were long that they would be able to pull off an upset. But I guarantee you, they will leave here a better football team. And those other people in 1AA better look out. The Eagles will fly high again this season down with a knee injury, first quarter covering a kickoff, and he is one guy that you know, 
Gary Gibbs doesn't want to see missing any, any playing time as that SEC schedule approaches. Second down and 18, Revere airing it out to no one in particular. He was looking for Myers, and Myers ran a different route. Four and a half minutes to play in this game. They stack up the receivers here on the bottom of your screen and send them the motion. Throw it out there, the weathers. Here's the pass that we were looking for. Now they throw it back across the field to the quarterback, Revere, who makes the grab. And now he's got some room to run and then goes down at the 32-yard line. Up chasing him down. Georgia stayed at home on the play. Because they too knew there was a wrinkle somewhere and <laughs> it was coming soon. It's coming sometime. Fourth down. Shelton gets it away. Damian Gary calls fair catch. And then drops oh the ball goodness. and it's recovered by Georgia Southern, I think. My goodness. Yep. Georgia Southern's got it. Jamar Jones got it. Damian Gary called for a fair catch and let it go right through his hand. Football's catching that punt, people chasing you down. You're looking up in the sky. But it's a fair catch, you think, no problem. Whistle. Marcus Stroud running on the field at the last second. Georgia trying to play with 10. To the students next week, and they say, hey, you see that? Adrian Peterson and the boys came to town, and we shut them out. Four eleven to play here. Take a look at Paul Johnson. It'll be just the seventh loss for Paul Johnson. Twenty-nine to nothing. Georgia leading Georgia Southern here. First and ten at the thirty-one, following the fumble. Revere. Oh yeah. Big open field for Myers, who stumbles trying to make a cut to the outside and goes down at the seventeen. Georgia looking for their first shutout since blanking Mississippi State 47 to nothing in 1997. Peterson. Right in the middle. Fell forward for a yard or two. Different look from what normal option teams are. Cap Burnett now checks back in the game for the first time in a while. Well, the Bulldogs going with uh, pretty much their backups in the secondary right now. Dontra Clements is in there. And Kentrell Curry. Kentrell Curry's in there, but Burnett just checks back in. But pretty much starters, except for Fleming in there at the line and the uh, linebackers. Ryan Davis also in. Third down and two. Take it to Peterson. Austin Myers. The touchdown with six. So with 2.55 to play, Georgia Southern breaks the shutout. On the 10-yard touchdown run. Beautiful uh, execute play. Myers. Watch this here. Again, fake the fullback. Everybody jumping on Peterson. The perfect pitch by Revere. And Myers has the foot speed. He's got the quicks. So Baronis, actually Shelton has come on to try this kick. Shelton puts it through the pipes. 2.55 to play in this game, and Georgia's lead has been cut to 29-7. Again, beautifully executed play. This is why this offense is so fun to watch. So many different looks, so many different wrinkles, and it all boils down to reading the option. Fake it to Adrian Peterson on third and what two that was. Mm -hmm. You know he's going to get it. Pulls it out. J.R. Revere played some good football here tonight. Well, let's see who comes in at quarterback for Georgia here. If they trot Quincy back out there, or we see the second teamer. And if it is the second teamer, who's that second teamer going to be? Is it going to be Corey Phillips or David Green? What have you heard about this quarterback situation? Do they want a red shirt, David Green? I, I'm hearing all types of things. Uh, the Eagles guy didn't want him laying on him. Can't and Jason, blame him for that. Jason Rader and Chris Blount kind of tussled there for a moment. Showing their wrestling skills. Things can get a little testy there on special teams sometimes. You better believe it. 248 to play. And let's see. Corey Phillips is in the ball game at quarterback now. Performance by Quincy Carter. A couple of bad throws and bad weather. Season opener, you have to expect some of that. Handoff goes to Veron Hayes. But he made
made some great decisions. That's where people have been critical, his decision-making. And tonight he made some good decisions, made some good throws. The big uh, quarterback draw versus the blitz to score made it 14-0 was a big play. All in all, I give Quincy B plus, A minus tonight. Gives you some room to improve. There's Quincy's final number, 16 of 27, 203. A couple of touchdowns and interception. He also ran for a touchdown. And he's healthy. That's yep. the best news. Yep. And speaking of walk-ons, we've talked about some walk-ons. Corey Phillips is another one of those kids that walked on here. Thornton now cuts back against the grain. They have some blocks. Tries to get outside. Let's see if he can. Stiff arms the defender and then gets slung out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Corey well, Phillips trying to make the block. If Deion Stokes isn't there, then Bruce Thornton is standing in the end zone about right This now. is a good play, the sweep reverse. Get out there, don't see anything. Hey, let's just reverse the field and get on that green grass. And you won't find that drawn up on the chalkboard. That's no, drawn that's up in his mind. That's not in the playbook. Yeah, that's drawn up on the chalkboard in his mind. Herschel did that a few times. Great success. Herschel did he had a, a quarterback that could block. Yeah. Did you throw one for him? Yeah, against Auburn in 81. Yeah. Was and it 80? Musa Smith is uh, checked back in. And here comes, is, those are not boos, folks. No, that's mew. That's moo. Or moo. I, I hope they're not booing. Mew or moo. They or better not be booing Musa Smith. No, they're not booing. They're happy to see him. Absolutely. He gets the ball again. Oh, man, he is just so aggressive when he gets his hands on the ball. Barreled over a couple of players up to the 46-yard line. I mean, it just looks like he says, I'm taking this distance. Deep in the backfield in the I formation. Georgia fans remember that. Well, you know, we talked about this in the opening, Buck, about how this is an odd rivalry and how Georgia fans pull for Georgia Southern and, and the vice versa. It's a friendly rivalry. So as the clock is winding down here, the Georgia Southern fans that are watching this evening are no doubt disappointed that their team is going to lose this season opener. At the same time, I imagine a lot of them are happy with what they saw from Georgia tonight. Well, they should be proud of this football team. They came in and gave a fight for, uh, you know, over two quarters. They didn't back down. They came up here ready to win, ready to play hard, and uh, there's a lot to be said for that. Some other teams would have come in here intimidated. The Eagles were not. That, that, you've got to give a great deal of credit to their coaching staff, who uh, is one of the best in college football, regardless of what division we're talking about. Indeed, and while I file through the drawer of old cliches, the final score will not, not be indicative of the fight that was put up this evening. 29 to seven, most likely the final play of the game right here. They toss to Musa. Man, he is so fun to watch. They'll run another because he ran out of bounds, or was knocked out of bounds, I should say. And, you know, as I look at this Georgia team, Matt, what I see, it, as far if you're looking for differences from last year's team, number one, most importantly, the defense under Gary Gibbs. Solid performance tonight. Look at Johnny Brown. Little Johnny Brown is what we call him. Number 49, senior running back. He's getting some action tonight. But look how small he is compared to everybody else. The, the second thing is the big play potential this Georgia offense has. You've got five to seven players that can take it the distance. Last year they had one. Tremendous difference in the two teams. Thornton goes down at the 50, and that was probably the final play. But those two things will ride this team. Their line of scrimmage is solid, but the defense looks a heck of a lot better than they showed last year. They're tackling better. They look like they knew what they were doing against a very difficult offense. And then on offense of Georgia, so many weapons this year. Quincy just must be drooling at the mouth as he looks down the road at these games to come. Not many double coverages going on with, with these guys lining up at wide receiver. And that is going to do it. The final seconds tick off the clock here at Sanford Stadium. And the Georgia Bulldogs have opened the 2000 season with a 29-7 victory over the Georgia Southern Eagles. All in all, Buck, a, a good opener for Georgia and, and not a bad one for Georgia Southern, although they certainly didn't get the result that they desired. But uh, I think both of these uh, fans for both of these teams have got to be happy with what they saw this evening. Oh, we, you know, Adrian Peterson put on quite a show. Uh, J.R. Revere showed that he is a good player. Uh, the Eagles will be tough to stop in one double A if they continue to improve. And then you look at the Georgia side, really the only negative note as I see it is the uh, 
deal with Boss Bailey? Is it a serious knee injury? If so, uh, there's, there's some problems there. But uh, let's, let's hope for the best in that situation. Well, there were three players tonight that uh, scored their first touchdowns as Georgia Bulldogs. Darrell Robinson scored on a 12-yard pass from Quincy Carter to get the Bulldogs on the board early at 7-0 on the Dogs' first possession. And then in the second half, we also had a touchdown coming for LeBron Mitchell, his first as a Georgia Bulldog. And then the Bulldogs' final touchdown came tonight from uh, a player that no doubt is going to end up being a fan favorite, and that's Musa Smith. Again, sweep right, one of the all-time great Georgia plays. See some good blocking there, and he just sees that corner, sees it open, and he takes it. Yeah, we saw a number of players. Darrell Robinson for the first time, Reggie Brown for the first time, Musa Smith for the first time, and for the first time, and we there we'd heard a lot about these players over the last couple of years for some of them, Reggie Brown in particular, and I don't think that their uh, their performances tonight did not disappoint. They really didn't. If we can just get these Georgia fans pumped up and cheering the defense and the offense when they do good things, I know it's a little tough on them, but they need a little more support from the home folks. Well, next up for the Georgia Bulldogs, they'll be on the road next week for their SEC opener against South Carolina. Georgia Southern will be home next week with Johnson C. Smith, and we'll be back here on pay-per-view in three weeks when the Georgia Bulldogs play host to the New Mexico State Aggies. Once again, your final score, the Georgia Bulldogs start the season with a 29-7 victory over the Georgia Southern Eagles. And now for Buck Ballou and the entire production crew, I'm Matt Stewart, so long from Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia.